How's it going? It's a shitty night tonight. I have two tables, all black people, so I know I'm not making no tips. Are you being serious right now? Yeah, look over there. I have two tables. They're all black. I'm working for free tonight. No, I, I mean, are you being seriously that racist? What? But you don't know that I got to tip you. Yes, I do. So just because they're black? I've been waiting tables for five years. I never got a tip from a black person. Not once. Uh, first of all, I don't believe you. Second of all, that's still racist. <laughs> I am not racist. Screw you. What are you talking about? She says black people don't tip. Are you nuts? Niggas don't tip. Everyone knows that. Have you ever waited tables before? No. Oh, shut up, asshole. Back on the bully when cats used to harmonize like... Yo. Yo. My men and my women, don't forget about the day. This is not the most the king. Yo. It's about a thing. Yeah. Feel real good. Wait. Called you again. Uh, Remember when he told you he was about to uh, bend your man? Yeah. You act like you ain't him, they give him a little trim to begin. Now you think you really gon' pretend Same. like you wasn't down and you called him again. Yeah. Plus, when you give it up so easy, you ain't even fooling him. Yeah. If you did it then, then you probably can. Yeah. Talking out your neck, saying you're a Christian. I must slam yeah. sleeping with the gin. Yeah. Now that was the sin that did Jezebel in. Yeah. Who you gon' tell when the repercussions spin? Showing off your ass, cause you thinking it's a trend, girlfriend. Let me break it down for you again. You know I only say it cause I'm truly genuine. Don't be a hard rock when you really are a gym, baby girl. Respect is just the minimum. Nigga, you still defending them now. Lauren is only human. Don't think I haven't been through the same predicament. Let it sit inside your head like a million women in Philly pen. It's silly when girls sell their souls because of sin. Look at where you be in. Hair weaves like Europeans. Fake nails up by Koreans. Come again. <laughs> and could I be a star? Does fame in this game have to change who you are? Could I be the same one who came from a faraway life? Just to make it in this Broadway lights? Now shining in the broad daylight. Go figure. Yo, welcome to the Black Out Tells Podcast with your host Rod and Karen. And we got my boy Justin in the house again. Uh, say what's up to the good people. Uh, hello, everybody. want to say hello to the Twitter fam, to the Facebook fam. Uh, appreciate Rod putting me back on again. Yeah, man. Anytime. we Yeah, it's, it's it's actually getting to the point now we have uh, more more guests and shows sometimes. I know, right? <laughs> we used to, for the first, like, 15 episodes, I was like, I hope these motherfuckers want to come on one day. <laughs> <laughs> Please scan them away. Yeah, I'm like, like they make me feel famous. <laughs> like, like this, the next best thing to be on TV. Yeah, you know my thing is I only want to get famous enough to sign some titties. That's it. <laughs> I don't really want to be famous That's like with all the problems. Too. Yeah, just famous enough for people like, oh, cool, sign these titties. Not, not. I don't want the problems. I don't want the drug addictions. None of that shit. No, you know, which that. One, the fame or the money? Uh. I would like the money without the fame, if that was yeah. possible. Yes, all day long. Anonymous richness. Yes, all day long. Like on the real, like Bill Gates is the most richest dude in the world, or whatever. But honestly, he could probably walk through the Walmart <laughs> and not even and, and nobody, like maybe two or three people would is, really be like, "Oh shit, Bill Gates." Is that more because of high dress or just? <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know. You think Bill Gates walk around blinged up when he ain't on like CNN and shit? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like him and his homeboys, he probably got like the platinum chain on. Yeah, diamond studded G. <laughs> like I still see him, I guess, riding around in a Honda or something. Like, like Honda <laughs> Element. Like I see that. I see him buying that car. Whereas I know I'm getting yeah, an Aston Martin Maybach or. Yeah, at least true. a range. I'm at least getting a range over. Yeah, I'm at least gonna get the new Honda Accord, you know. No, I, I, I want a Volvo, no. A Volvo? <laughs> we, got, we got small dreams. <laughs> I just want to be debt free. <laughs> um, Alright, man, so um, don't forget you can leave comments on our podcast. Just go to Podomatic.com, go to iTunes, or go to our Facebook group, 
and leave comments there. You can also leave comments on our blog, the Black Guy Who Tips blogspot.com so whenever you go to facebook podomatic or um itunes just search for the black guy who tips and uh our podcast will pop up you can also leave voicemail uh 704-557-0186 and uh you know if you leave us a message we will play it on the show and we really do appreciate your messages we do um they're very very funny you guys yes, are, they are so creative and um you know, it's just this that's the kind of interactive feedback that makes this show all of ours and keeps it going. So uh, we appreciate every voicemail and emails. Uh, you can email us at the black guy who tips at gmail.com. So um, I was on Ed the Sports Fan uh, Blog Talk Radio's uh, his show mm-hmm. last night. I'll mm-hmm. uh, just go to Blog Talk Radio and look up, uh, I think it's called Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Or you can go on iTunes and search for Unsportsmanlike Conduct and it should come up. And uh, we basically talked about the Eagles and we talked about our podcast and talked about uh, uh, my relationship with uh, Bomani Jones and the Morning Jones calling them and whatnot. So it was just a real chill, laid back uh, conversation. But they have a really good show. It's uh, one hour weekly. Uh, I think they record live at like 9 p.m. on uh, Wednesdays. So we couldn't do the show yesterday because I knew I was going to be doing that. And uh, I didn't want to try to rush everything in in one night. So instead, we're going to rush it into this night. <laughs> all right, all right. So, um. Could give us a chance to sit back and talk about the bad girls pull up. Yeah, that was the main thing. Honestly, you honestly, he's right. I was work. I was worried about the scheduling. Mostly because of the bad girls. Cause like I, normally what we do is when we can't do it on a Wednesday for whatever reason, we move it up to Tuesday. Mm-hmm. But now that the bad girls play comes on, I was like, man, I, I can't do it. I got to talk about. I got to talk about my girls. Man, see, I've been watching them bitches for a while. Yeah, so. you. Just <laughs> like I'm into it. You know, yeah. back when they was popping off for real. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, and we will get to them. But before we do, uh, speaking of the Bad Girls Club, the official weapon of the podcast is... The Taser. And they could use one in that house. Yes. <laughs> yes. And um, the unofficial sport is... Bullet ball. And now that we're talking about the Taser, last night I was watching TV. And what was that show I was watching on? Disorder in the Court. Yeah, Disorder in the Court. I seen two good Tasers. And the rest of that stuff, I said it'd ended quicker if they'd have just tased everybody in every episode. <laughs> <laughs> now I had been, I had watched some of those before, but sometimes when they show the people with the guns, yeah. I was like, I'm more I'm more for gun now instead of them anti guns. Like, yeah, more of us need guns, like not the police, but right. more regular citizens need guns. Yeah, because if I had a gun and I see him, somebody else acting crazy. I can shoot him for y'all. Right. I can help keep y'all safe. I, I don't You're welcome. need no gun. And now I'll shoot him mm. from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need like, no gun. Far enough that I can run and get away. <laughs> I don't know how accurate I would be with a gun with the adrenaline pumping and stuff, but I would definitely lay down some cover fire. You know what I'm saying? i just be like, cover! And just start blanking. Yeah, not one, them, me not one of them little smaller guns. I want something like a, a real assault rifle. Like, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you going for the good stuff. Like I want to you know. be like that brother that used to be on the... Well, I don't know what happened to his brother, but when they used to have a tea party protest, they always had the one brother with the assault rifle on his back. Yeah, something like, like that. Like, and they used to try to tout that as like, the tea party's not that racist. They got a black dude. I'm like, yeah, but the black dude had to carry his assault <laughs> rifle. Like, he was planning on shooting a lot of motherfuckers if things went wrong. Look, he was the total uh, black guy that normally dies first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah. He's like the canary when you put him in a mine and you like, the gas gets loose. And it's like, all right, if the, if the canary dies first, then all the white people, let's get up here and leave. Like, that was what the nigga was. Yep. It was like, look, if the, if the police start shooting, they would definitely shoot his black ass first. <laughs> and then, the yeah, the rest of the Tea Party people, we just going to disperse. Like, this never happened. Um, so don't forget you can also post our podcast on your Facebook page. Um, just copy the link. Um, if you're part of our group on Facebook, I've updated every night that we do a show, and you can just actually hit share or you can copy the link directly into your status and attach it or hit you know enter, send, whatever. And it will actually share a player on your podcast page, on your on your Facebook page, where your friends can just play the podcast straight off of your Facebook page. So, you know, it's a it's an easy way to help us out. And as always, your donations are welcome and uh, you know needed. So make sure that you donate if you can. 
um, so that we could blow up. You know, this is a unique black voice out here that y'all not gonna hear uh, anywhere else, and you'll never find out about all this porn stuff that you need to know. Uh-huh. If you don't donate to the podcast, you can do that by going to the blog, theblackoutist.blogspot.com. Or you can donate by going to the Podomatic page, and there's a donate button on the right-hand column of each page. Um, all right, voicemails. Y'all ready to play some voicemails, man? We got uh, quite a few this time, actually. We got four. So. Wow, we're breaking records. So I wanted to ask you, did anybody ever send pictures? Like For Undressed Mom? Yes. No. I was let down, man. <laughs> I thought I thought my girl on Twitter, come on, come on my tits. I think that's her name, come on my tits with a K. I thought she was gonna hook me up, man, but she, it was the last day. I did a last ditch effort. She was like, I'm gonna email you, send, my, send me your email address. I did nothing. She was all talk. You know, I don't understand that because it's definitely, they post pictures all the time on my face. Mm hmm. But just from the neck down, like, he's not asking for face. Yeah, if I would have just did this on, uh, I wasn't gonna tell their names or nothing. But if I would have did this on uh, Black Planet, I would have been all right, man. I guess I just yeah. was a decade too late. All right, man. Here we go with the voicemail. Hey, what up, man? This is uh, Freddie Mac. I just want to uh, call in and say I'm loving the show. We're out of carry out. You niggas have me laughing every night I'm at work. I also just want to comment on uh, that phone call that the voicemail and Larry is. Uh, sitting in the other day about the, uh, the N word. I can just say, growing up in Mississippi, it seems like I should have a problem with it, but I really don't. I guess it's just a generation or whatever, but as I'm going to college and playing tennis with a lot of white people, you know, I used to have people who ask me, like, Fred, can I, can I say the N word and things like that? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I was just like, just kind of caught me off guard. I was just like, yeah, whatever, whatever. You know, it kind of reminded me of like when I was growing up. I used to like ask my older brothers and, and sisters like, could I, could I curse? And they'd be like, well, yeah, they ain't got to curse all you want. You know what I'm saying? So I would say that the white people do, uh, some of them are cool with it, some of them not, but like character is all depends on how they use it. So I can understand that. And also, growing up with the white people, I, I understand about like how they do the crazy stuff, like pills and all that too, because I still have like the same uh, thing you went through, I went to a dentist as well, we got, you know, oxytizer or whatever, and I'm telling my homeboy who was white at the time, he was like, what are you, you know what I'm saying, I'm say go up for it, you know what I'm saying, what you said, and some of those, I was just like, yeah, what's the like, what? You know what I'm saying, hey, you know, like how I got that, you know what I mean, but you know, after I gave him two for 30, you know, I was uh, thinking back like, damn, you know what I'm saying, I just, just committed a motherfucking car, you know what I mean, but, only, you know, that's just how it is, if you know what I'm saying, so, <laughs> I love the show, if you want to say that, once again, keep doing your thing, I hope, uh, you know, the best of luck to all y'all, and spread the word about the uh, podcast and all that from the website, so, just want to say, keep it up, man, and, um, yeah, just keep doing your thing, man, it's Matt. Alright, thanks, Freddie Mac, uh, for the call and the voicemail, um, Freddie Mac is a dude that also watches the BGC on the Ox. Okay. So, uh, he's, you know, he's one of the cooler people. But, um, what did you think about what he said about the N-word and white people? Uh-huh. And the drugs? Wow. We don't condone crimes on the Black Guy Who Tip podcast. I just want to make that clear. Any crimes that you commit or you say that you allegedly commit, uh, we are not in no way, shape, or form associated with it, nor do we condone it. Condone it. Just in case any police officers out there listening. Yeah, definitely. Um, the the thing about um, the whole like selling drugs thing, I couldn't do it, man. Like when they asked me, I was just like, this shit seems like a trap. Like <laughs> who asked randomly? Plus, because you got to remember, this is a foreign concept to me. In my household, we was never doing drugs, prescription drugs for recreation. No. I didn't know anybody in my neighborhood that did prescription drugs for recreation. No. Um, I knew a couple dudes that used to drink cough syrup, but we considered them losers. Like, nobody was like, oh, man, I need to get on what he's on so I can sleep through class and get F's, too. Like, it's not like he was getting a whole bunch of pussy drinking cough syrup all the time and uh, drinking uh, mouthwash and shit like that. So, I don't know, man. It's just... When they asked me that, I just was like, froze. It never occurred to me, like, I should sell to these people. Plus, they were my friends. And it's hard for me to think of my friends as a fiend. 
You know what I'm saying? Well, first of all, for me, I tuned him out after the first 10 seconds because his voicemail was too long. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, is he going to get to a point? <laughs> but, uh, no disrespect, but that's just my attention span. Yeah. Uh, I got, especially once you started talking about, you know, you grew up with the white folks. I'm, I felt like you was, you know, Arnold from different strokes. <laughs> you know, I was thinking of it. <laughs> Did they find you or something? <laughs> Jay, Jay, I'm here clowning, man. Hey, Freddie Mac, man. It's, thank nuts. you for calling the show, man. That's we nothing, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I do appreciate him calling in. <laughs> yeah. but, I, but he lost me after that. I was yeah. just, he kind of went off on a tangent, man. But uh, I got what you was trying to say, dog. Sometimes you got to sell some drugs. Uh, and just don't just take your government name off your Twitter account if you got it on there. I'm about to say, like, uh, hopefully right. Freddie Mac is not anything to do with your real name. <laughs> but, Secure uh, your network. Yeah. <laughs> the, only, the only profitable drug deal I've, I've ever seen was Lafayette. Yeah, so, from True Blood. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so other than that, I, it's a waste of time, dog. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, play. We got more voicemails, so let's play some more, man. But thank you for the call, Freddie Mac. Crime is not worth the time. Rodney's prime, and say that again. What's happening? It's a bad thing to the sports. Parentheses, K I, in parentheses. If y'all was shout out, it would have been wow. Man, but I do have something to say. I ain't been on an atypical sports show in a week. So my brand, my voice has not been heard. And I want to give out some shout outs. I don't know if you guys can limit this little topic that we do with our show. But the thing is, August 18th, and I got some birthday shout out, birthday shout out, 1934. Our editor's note. We are recording this the 19th, but we normally do record on Wednesday. So that's why these birthdays are one day behind. But I'm going to play them anyway because my man Keith put a lot of work into this. Yes, he did. And he's not getting his own birthday segment on his own show, the Atypical Sports Show, uh, which is a podcast you can find on iTunes with him and his co-host Rob. And uh, it's extremely funny, uh, different take on sports, um, and also cleaner than our podcast. So, all right, you ready to play it? Mm-hmm. Rodney is prime. That's what they got to get. Oh, oh we should do a sports. I didn't know you couldn't Parentheses. fast forward. <laughs> Remix! <laughs> wow. Uh. Man, but I do have something to say. It's your B day. It's your B day. Hey, it's your B day. It's your B day. I've been heard, and I want to give out some shout out. I don't know if you guys can limit this little topic that we do with our show, but today is August 18th, and I got some birthday shout out. Birthday shout out. What about Stephen Roberto Clemente? Was born. <laughs> we all know that he just gets to Roberto Clemente, and now the Latino looked up to him and basically took over the major league people after she arrived to the state. Happy birthday, Roberto Clemente, number 21, much love. One year later, Rayford Johnson was born. Happy birthday to the American athlete, the Catalan gold medalist in the 1960 Rome Olympics. Most people think Muhammad Ali would have started in the 1960 Olympics. I gotta say it's Rayford Austin. I mean, I'm here, Austin, Rayford Johnson. Happy birthday to Shout out to Ray Long about LeBron, Nate average a triple double. But the person who came the closest most recently was Arizona State University's own Pat Lever, who averaged 19 points, 9 rebounds, 8 assists in the 89 season. Happy birthday to you. 50 years old, so it's a milestone birthday. Um, Malcolm Jamal Warner, happy birthday to Theo. Shout out. <laughs> uh, also, some football players were born. It's their milestone 30th birthday. Jeremy Shockey, Bart Scott. We had an interesting season in New Orleans played New Jersey. I mean, New Orleans played New York Jets in the Super Bowl 2011. I want to give a shout out to those two. Also, show Rob. Man, can you call up Rob and make sure he gets that fantasy football going on? I don't know if he's really um, proactive enough to get that done. So maybe you have to be the commissioner. Yo, typical sports key, I'm out. Peace. Peace. And, um, yeah, I will call Rob. I'm going to make a note of that right now. I will call Rob and leave a message and get in his ass because he was like a week ago like I'm going to send out the emails for the fancy football invite and it's been over a week and no, we haven't got nothing. So I don't appreciate that shit, dog. Did he win last season? <laughs> uh, he didn't. He didn't organize his league last season. He was like part of somebody else's league. Oh. But now he has his own podcast based on sports. So he's going to create his own league. He'll with be his, the commissioner. Yeah, yeah, be the commissioner with his own fans. But then... He's just half-passing it, man. <laughs> like, come on, Rob. Step it up, man. So I'm going to have to call him and say something to him, man, because we can't accept that. 
it, it'll be messed up. The, the ATIP Nation can't even have their own little fantasy league so we could get our trash talk on. So, yeah. uh, um, well, happy birthday to the B Listers. Yeah, that was, that was named. Yeah, okay. happy birthday, man. I, no, I didn't know. know back when Jamal wanted was 40, then it old. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> God. You've been around a long oh, time. It's been a long time really? since he got that ear yeah, pierced that he wasn't be supposed in to. Her thirties or late twenties. Yeah, Rudy probably about thirty right now, yeah. thirty two. Oh, she's still a young girl. Yeah, she was looking good last time I seen her though. I was like, what though? She done grew up. Feeling out, Rudy. Well, uh, better than Tempest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather be uh Bud, you know what I'm saying, than Alvin. <laughs> Alright, man. Um here's the other uh here's another one. Yo, what's up, Ryan Karen? Boy, corner up um, with my 40 inches. Hey, man, I just called in because I said I hit up the show. Tell me to watch this address club shit, man. I'm trying to figure out, man. Yo, where the fuck think you this fake ass Robin Tick looking? Got the Timberlake found in Topo Wire, we bored. They got this song. I catch it. It's ridiculous, man. It's so hard to And damn, where did you go fight? What's this song? Oh, my girl, can't you say if you can't spend thirty dollars on the drink, you can't fuck in the house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you spend twenty, you can at least fuck out that. Emilio Estevez, like my seventy boy, can't even afford a goddamn bag. How the hell you go all the way to Miami and find bone? Really awesome bad girls, man. That's kind of sad, but I don't know, man. I don't know what to do. <laughs> you call old girl Antoine Johnson, man. I'll be watching the show and I'll be waiting for a fight to break out so she can just run in and yell, Happy to be here, I know, man, so. You keep on watching this crazy shit, man. So maybe you could explain to me why every girl come on the bad girl show and think they gonna find the best friends in the world and ain't nobody gonna be crazy and they have to play. <laughs> Whatever, man. I'm gonna let y'all do y'all thing and you let me know what you think, man. It would be with my 40 acres and y'all get at me. Black man, one of the best podcasts out there. I was at. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Corner Boy, man. They, he's he's a host of a podcast called Where's My Forty Acres, and it's just him and a couple of his friends from like college or, or high school or whatnot. Um, and they just talk about random stuff over the phone, yeah. like through Skype or whatever. And it's a pretty funny one, man. That yes, first episode. Is. They talked about uh, the, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh, okay. And I was laughing so hard at work, I had to get up and walk away from my desk <laughs> just remembering all the stuff they were talking about and all the different jokes they made. But, um, yeah, man, Bad Girls Club, dude, that dude that they brought home was so soft. The one that, the one that was, that, that got, got. Cat was gonna get yeah. in the business. Yeah. But, you know, I really ain't mad at him. He yeah. was like, I ain't buying them drinks. I'm a fuck anyway. Like, yeah, I, re- I respected his gangster, but his plan didn't go down the way he like. He never, you can tell he never dealt with an irate, crazy black woman before, because he was actually trying to make logical sense back to her. <laughs> and that shit is like the anti. That shit is like throwing gasoline on a fire right there. It's like you can't make sense now. The only thing you can do is not say nothing and just hope she calms Why down. Why didn't just take the girl back to his house? Like, <laughs> yeah, I think they fucking with some bumps. We'll get into that. We'll get into well, that. Well, let me say this. Yeah. She got $2 on her own. How's she gonna hate on him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, regardless of what he got, he can find more money than what she currently got. He do, <laughs> yes. Oh, we're gonna get into that, man. All right, the last voicemail. Hey, what's going on? Hey, man. Straight you, man. How many times? Take me three times, man. Hey, right. Hey, Rob. And Karen, say that again as that as in D A T. I got a question, and they just was just dawned on me. I see a lot of conservatives talking about calling Obama a socialist and, and the Marxism, and fascism, and not you know. So it's all this crazy foolishness. But I was just thinking, was Jesus a capitalist or a socialist? I kind of know that. I know the answer. He was a socialist. I mean, he did say. That it's easy for uh, a camel to go through a needle than a rich man to get in a heaven. But if they were followers of Christ, how come they don't strive to be like Christ and be that kind of compassion uh, socialist? You know, capitalism don't offer anything to the uh, don't doesn't offer compassion to the poor. And I think that's what separates conservatives and liberals is the compassion to the poor. 
you know, I think America has a fine balance between socialism and capitalism. But you see what what abuse is happening with, with capitalism, and also you see the screen when you what happened with socialism. But I just want to get you uh, get y'all thoughts on that. Man, I love the show. Yeah, y'all doing a great thing. Um, they're always entertaining every week, twice a week at work. But uh, keep doing your thing. And I'm in leave this voicemail before y'all got on yesterday. But you know, family, you know, come first. I got twins, and I got three year old son. All right, Holly, this is uh, Xavier Forte, your DIY at Twitter, Holly. All right, man. Well, thank you for calling, Mr. Cromarty, um, with all your kids and stuff. <laughs> uh, but nah, seriously, dude, I uh, appreciate it. And um, I can't believe you called up here trying to kick knowledge on my podcast and shit. <laughs> you insulting my ignorance. <laughs> Uh-huh. College boy. Yeah. <laughs> what you been reading this shit, nigga? Think you better than me because you got a goddamn degree? <laughs> I can read too. <laughs> can you whoop my ass? <laughs> can you spell I see you, nigga? What that spell? <laughs> nah, uh, nah, seriously though, um, what y'all think about his point about uh, socialism versus capitalism versus Jesus versus Obama? <laughs> well, to be honest, Jesus probably was a capitalist. Think he was a capitalist? I mean, think about it. He traveled for free. (laughs) (laughs) He would crash at other people's spot. That's true. And they would have to feed and take care of him and wash his feet. But he wasn't making no dough, though, man. Like, capitalists, you got to make some money. What they do, they walk around and everything is free. And they they got their normal annual income. And that was when he was baptizing folks. Like, I'm building the church up. I picture that as Jesus being a um, hippie. If he just stand at people's crib for free, don't pay me. That's like, Wait, but Jesus, man, can you take care of some of this bill, dog? Come on. But that's, I'm saying, that's that's a capitalist mindset. Like, I keep all my money and spend yours. See, Jesus is the kind of and dude. And he built the church up. Jesus is the kind of dude that does favors for instead of paying you. You know what I'm saying? you like, Jesus, man, you been standing under my roof, smoking all my weed. Hanging out with these bitches all the time, and then you be like, hey man, I'll just turn the water into wine, and then y- now y'all got wine. You're like, nigga, you did that for free. <laughs> you didn't have to earn that. Nah, I'm just joking. Uh, Jesus, though, uh, yeah, it's his, his policies that they teach in the Bible probably are closer to socialism than capitalism, but the conservatives don't really believe in that shit. They just, <laughs> they, they just hijack a bunch of people's uh, beliefs because they're trying to get their votes, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think politicians really believe anything. The other day, I, I was like, uh, I never trust a black man with no facial hair except for, uh, Paul, except for, uh, Mooney. That's the only dude I fuck with <laughs> that don't got facial hair that's black. And, uh, somebody was like, what about Obama? I was like, he's a he's a politician. Who, who trusts politicians, dog? Like I I think he's he's one of the few that seem to have his heart in the right place and seems to want to do good. But at the same time, he's still a politician. In order for him to exist, he has to get money for motherfuckers that are corrupt. He can't like if he if he came out tomorrow and was like, listen, I'm no longer taking money from any lobbyist, anybody that has some type of agenda. Do not contribute to my campaign. He would be out of the White House so quick. He wouldn't have made it. No, you can't. So, like, I don't trust politicians because they have to be dirty to make it. Like, they make a bunch of compromises where it's like, look, this is the best I can do. Y'all can kind of get half health care. All right? I can't. The insurance companies put in on this. (laughs) So, I can't really just tell them that they can't have none. I'm sorry. That's Hillary Clinton. Yeah, all of them, man. All of them. I mean, Republicans are no different, man. I think, if anything, they might put their shit more out there where they're just like, look, we ain't really trying to help y'all little people. But what they do, you know, give you the reach around is with the, with the, with the, with the religion. Like, they just take the religious platforms and then the Democrats typically take, like, the racial platforms. It's the same shit. They only believe in that to a certain point, And that point is once they get your vote. And then it's like, oh, never mind. We good. You know, to be honest for myself, I would have to ask Mel Gibson first before I really yeah. made any <laughs> I mean, he did make he the did, yes. of Christ. He did so the most research on this. I have, I have to base it off what his thoughts yes. are, then come up with a, a, a good answer for I'm you. pretty sure he'd be anti-Jewish, whatever was going on, and probably not pro-nigger. 
So I don't know what his politics would be uh, necessarily. You know? uh, uh, but I'm gonna uh, assume that uh, maybe he's a uh, indi- maybe he's a Tea Party. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows what hell? But until I hear his opinion on it, I don't know. So uh, y'all heard the news, man? What's up? Brian Pumper mixtape is about to come out. <laughs> what? It's about to drop, son? What? For real? Yes, dog. That's, I'm downloading that the first day it come out. Dog, Brian Pumper, man, shit is crazy. <laughs> shit is crazy, dog. Look, what's the number one single? Oh, in the shade. <laughs> yes, man. I hit him up on Twitter, and I emailed him and said, "Look, man, when you drop this, I need you to come on the podcast. I need you to yeah. drop a ten minute interview with us." Just promoting your, you know, promote your product, man. I see he's all about promoting himself on Twitter and proving these haters wrong. Now, will he sell his album at Best Buy or at your local porn <laughs> shop? I, I don't know. know. See, I think he got to give it away like yeah, Drake. I, yeah, I think the the uh, mixtape will come with the CD, like all wrapped up in one one, one volume. Let's we'll see if he sells it. With the DVD? It. Yeah. But I see he can sell it and you can get a free chain with it. Right. Well, um, <laughs> oh, man. See, <laughs> or, or bracelet. See, Justin trying to clown you, Brian. I know you probably listening to this right now. I'm not. I'm not clowning. I'm not here. No, he, I'm saying he got money like that. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Because right, right. I'm. I, I'm I saying think, he got money like that. I, mean, I think the dude is hands down the realest rapper in the game right now. Oh, and probably the most intelligent. Yeah. Well, when you look at his um schemes on how to how he sell, making money, yeah, like, like his hustle is ridiculous for one, two, and I've never heard him say anything in a rap that he has not done. That's point blank. I've never heard him say one line that he did not admit. Like I was like, you know what? Credibility. Yes. What beats that? That's like you look at look at who's making it. Rick Ross. <laughs> Ricky. Rose. 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 Like I see why Brian Pumper had a diss song to Rick Ross. Dog, he ain't real. Jay Z still talking about selling coke. Come on, Jay. <laughs> that was what twenty years ago. You were selling coke, man. You an old ass grown man now. Brian Pumper still fucks bitches. So I don't really see how he's uh, lying. He's uh, telling the truth. And he's putting them in the game. Yeah, when he's talking about paint your face, you know what I'm saying? Or on the grind. Yes, I know song titles. I've been listening, Brian. <laughs> Come on the podcast, dog. I, I'm trying to get this interview, man. That's my nigga, Brian Pumper. And I heard that him and Montana fell out, man. She did some type of interview talking about she wish she had never dealt with him and all this shit, so... I don't know what what's wrong with her. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. She needs to appreciate who yes. came for her story. How did you get your first shot? Would I know the name Montana Fishburne if it wasn't for Brian Pumper? Mm-mm. Exactly. Like, he overlooked the blemishes on her ass and everything. Exactly. And still dude. fucked the raw dog. Yep. Like, come on. And he did Owen in the Shave featuring just her. Normally his videos had like five, six, seven porn women in it. But nah, he said this one is just for you. That's why you can't give nobody shit, Jay. You can't trust these women, man. Bet you he hooked up with that weave and everything. I'm sure he did. Speaking of not being able to trust women, mm-hmm. it's time for the BGC on the Ox. <laughs> um, so that I watch. They need some better theme music. Yeah, why does all the music on the Bad Girls Club all sound like just slut music? Like, every song is by a woman and it's all like. I'm a party, I'm a fuck, I'm going to hit the DJ. Like, every fucking they, song is the same. They need something that they would that's real hot that's in a strip club. Yeah, they, they do need. Like, they that, do, that should yeah. be their theme music. Why can't they get, like, Nicki Minaj to do one song for them? Pay her to do one song instead of spending a bunch of money on a bunch of whack shit. Pay Nicki Minaj to do one song and just play that all the time. You know what I'm saying? And instead, like, they got these whack-ass girls that sound like they really are about 12 years old. Talking about, I'll fight that bitch. Fight that bitch. I'm gonna fight that bitch. Look at my titties. It's like, this, that's a song? They should have got Antoine Dotson to do their song. Like, yeah, <laughs> he's a lot more creative. Yes, uh, definitely. He got lyrics. He could definitely ghostwrite something. Yeah. He got some lyrics for him. You know, you know what would be a good song for them, though? What? It's T Pain, I'm in love with a stripper. Yeah. That's my song. Well, there's only, the thing is, there's only one stripper on the show. Like, but if I didn't tell you that, <laughs> right, you no wouldn't idea. know. Yeah. These women take well, their clothes well, off so fast. Technically, I still don't know that they strip, but they really look more like prostitutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brandy's the, the only one that... Stripper is an upgrade. Brandy <laughs> is the only one that actually claims to strip. The rest of them chicks be taking clothes off like it's nothing, though. And, I mean, Brandy does, too, but she actually seemed like she had some stripper rules and... You know, she doesn't just strip. She got she got a whole she got a whole process she has to go through 
with the stripping and make sure you don't violate any of the stripper laws. I wonder really how much money she made as a stripper. Like, I would never ask her for a lot there. Dude. Just looking at her like... What? Like, her. there's a couple chicks on there where you just like, how did you get on here? You must just be on here for fighting. Like, what was your, what, what is the Bad Girls Club audition tape like? You know what I'm saying? Like, when they have I MTV. Tell them what them chicks probably do. They probably do some nasty, skanky, funky stuff to be selected. Well, when they do, um, like, yeah, like, when they do the real world, you know, they always show, like, you know, the, the typical douche video of, like, maybe you out, you no shirt on, running around, or in a bathing suit top, and you're just like, my, I ain't the cheerleader in my high school. It's so awesome. Bro. I play on the football team. And you can pre-vote for them. Like, like yeah. I want this person on. I want to see them on. Like, the what is the bad girls club? It's just like a mug shot and then like <laughs> what what crimes you've done. What STDs. <laughs> <laughs> what STDs you have? Well, I have hepatitis D. You're like, that shit don't even exist. Well, I had the most visits to the health department in my county. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for fights and STDs. <laughs> Yep. And this one time, you know, they removed the bullet, and they supposed to keep the bullet in you. I wanted them to keep my bullet. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did, instead of writing notes during the show, what I did was I just went back to my Twitter um, account and looked at what I was tweeting about at the time, so I can kind of go back down what happened. Like, people always wonder why I tweet so much about certain things. It's like, I can go back and remember everything that happened in this episode now. So, um, the first thing was... Uh, old girl Christine, I think it's not Christine, Danielle. Mm -hmm. She's still trying to fuck that 20 year old boy. The one, like, she fucked his friend already now, last week. But he was cool with her fucking his friend, which, of course, all dudes are. Yeah, like, nobody, <laughs> nobody cares about you. So, she smashed the homie. <laughs> yeah, she smashed the homie, dude. And so she, um, she basically was like, look, I'm trying to get with the 20 year old, I think his name's Zach or something. So, I remember the episode before they tried to play it off. They were like, um, the, her, the dude, the other dude got in the club, but Zach didn't. And they're like, why not? And he's like, oh, he forgot to bring his wallet. He don't have his ID. So it was like, oh, okay. So they let, you know, the other dude went home, fucked Danielle that night. And then she's like, I still want to hit his friend. So then they went to another club and he was like, I can't go in. I'm only 20. I was like, I knew it. I said that the first week. I knew he wasn't old enough. They look young. She picked these niggas up doing flips on the street. That's young nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? You know what? But does he really want to fuck or does he just want to be on TV? I think he want to fuck because he wasn't talking enough. Like, the, we'll get to the other dude, but the John B looking dude, I think he wanted to be on TV. The dude that looked kind of like the lead singer from Maroon 5. Like he he wanted to be, he wanted to be on TV because he was doing all this talking and all this acting and shit. Zach was just trying to be quiet enough to get some pussy. <laughs> he was just trying. To, he was like, if I shut up long enough, like when you're 20, you don't have that much game and you don't really understand crazy. So he like he didn't realize how far in over his head he was because he was just on some like uh, like when the one girl was going crazy and Danielle took her shirt off and was like. Uh, bitch, you don't talk to me like that. Da -da -da -da. Like he was, she went up there and she was like, "I'm gonna give you something now." He's like, "Uh, you sure you don't want to go downstairs and handle that?" And I was like, "Dude, you better get in while you can." At least get you some head. Yeah, you do it now, dog. Now or never. These bitches will be going crazy within five minutes if you getting in there. So, um, basically, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what the conversation with him and his friend was like. Like, was he like, nigga? Yeah. <laughs> That's some good pussy. Oh, he was like, man, listen, I smashed it real quick. Yeah. In and out. Like, that. <laughs> I think it was just uh, like wrestling. You know, when you have a tag team match, you just hop out. <laughs> You're in. Like, I don't even think it was a, a real... Because she was so upfront about it. It's really like you don't have to run game. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes like, oh, man, look, I hit it. Now, this is how I hit it. So you can hit it too, brother. And, well, and she already told me she want to give it to you. Right, yeah. And my biggest thing is this, when uh, they was like, he was 20, I was looking at the TV like, oh my gosh, I could be his mama because I would come and whoop your ass <laughs> for messing with my child. Yes, yeah, because, that is kind of funny. Because, I mean, I understand he's illegal of age, but at the same time, it's like, sometimes, like you say, I don't think he really understood what he was stepping into with them. It was more than he could really handle. And my thing is this, 
this is a grown ass woman. You are, I know by law you grown, but your mind ain't grown. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Well, well, I would well, say you this, can't from, be whooping a twenty year old. From a male point of view, not without seeing the show, and I just know my son going over a bunch of females' houses, right? And he about to get them so long. I'd be like, son, put the pipe down, get you, have a good time. But you know you're gonna see the show though. But and what then would you after, say? And what after, after finding out later, I'd be like, dude, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what all that? You know what all that for some pussy? That's a lot of shit to go through, bro. You work, work hard, smart. Don't work hard. Um, but, but also, I think that's just a different perspective from a male to a female perspective. Because I'm looking like you take a full fledged advantage of my child. You well, know. see, the way I look at it is once you're of legal age, I mean, you do what you want to. Even if I was Lawrence Fishburne, I would still been like, she fucked up, but what can I do about it? I wouldn't have spent a million dollars to get them tastes back. And at the now, bar, I'm starting to get now, now, that to it. Like, I'm starting to see more and more older dudes hollering younger girls yeah. <laughs> and vice versa just from being at the Y. So yeah, I had to call somebody out one day, man. I was talking to this chick that was like 14 or something. I was like, hey, man, what you doing? <laughs> she doing? Get like, your ass away from me. It's to be normal. Plus, you know how old she is? is? Plus, if R. Kelly's still making music, I mean, is there really any punishment from it? That's true, man. I got to give an idea. So, um, I thought Christy, I thought, um, Kristen, the one that was hollering at the, um, old Maroon 5 ass nigga, I thought she was gonna rape that dude in the pool. Like, he, ah, he was ah. there for like two minutes, <laughs> and she was tonguing him down, having serious relationship conversations with this motherfucker. And that's what's the nastiest, is him kissing her. Yeah, dude, first of all, it's hard not to kiss somebody. When they get that close, did you see how close she was? It was like the, it, there was no cool way out. He would have had to reject her, get up, and leave. He could he could have been like, you know what, my breath ain't too fresh right now. Something, dog. She knew what his breath smelled like. She was so close. She already had. She had already factored in. She was accepting that. Like it's just hard to turn a woman down for a kiss anyway. Not like that. But. Yeah. He was there, it looked like, to hang out and to just try to holler at some chicks. And she just latched on to him so quick, man. He never got a chance to even explore his options. And she is crazy. I just, I don't know. I had to do something. But I, yeah. she couldn't have been on. I guess I look at it the same way with porn stars when they be eating the girl out. I'm like, ugh. Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> like, like, I know you get paid to have sex with her, but... Well, they do ST. At least they do STD checks. They don't. They don't. <laughs> yeah. The point is, you're some of the cleanest sex you can have in the I'm, world. I'm yeah. still not eating her out, though. Unlike, right. uh, unlike, uh, regular life. Regular life, yeah. <laughs> yeah, regular Most life. Most people should no. be more concerned about regular life than porn. Like, that dude, like you said, that dude should have been more concerned about the health of his mouth than, yeah, uh, I'm, Brian Pumper, for example. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm still not eating them. Right. Pay me a fucker, but I'm not eating them. That's right. <laughs> I feel you, man. I feel you. I don't understand the dudes that do like the gangbang scene, and it's always one dude that goes down on the chick. Like, ugh, nigga, what, is, what are you doing? I'm like, well, none of us are here for that. <laughs> I guess he like to taste some tea. Yeah, even she, even she looked down at him like, what are you, what are you doing? Hey, hold on. Show you want to do this? Yeah, <laughs> got that not so fresh feeling. I guess, um, maybe he, maybe he, you know what? You can always blame everything on alcohol. Maybe we didn't see him yeah. getting that drunk, but true. hopefully yeah. he was drunk. I, it was the middle of the day. They look sober to me. I think, they, I just think they that he got... looking for breakfast. Well, this, it's not this group, because they poor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my theory my theory on this dude, though, is that he came on there to be on TV. He's the exact opposite of Zach, the young cat. The young cat was just like one in a million sitting on the side of the street, chicks hollered at him. And how can I just not fuck up getting some pussy? <laughs> the, this dude came on there like, I'm, I'm auditioning. Like, because he was like kissing on her, looking at her in the camera. Then remember that time when a uh, cat was blanking out and he looked in her face, he was like, Everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> Come on, dog. He's, he's on TV. Yes, yeah, his beard was perfectly manicured. Yeah. His hair was always done. Yeah, like, best shirt. Yeah, dude, yeah. He was he was on there auditioning, man. He was not interested in that chick. You know what? He did tell Cat, I could buy your family a house. I mean, he said. No, he said I could buy this house. He said, house. I will blow it, knock your house down, build another one on top of it. It's something I was like, what are you talking about? That's the worst insult of all time. It is, but it doesn't say I have money. It don't work for it don't work for black women. Not her. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, all right, man. I can see her and Beanie being together too. Yes, yes, cat. <laughs> yes. All right, so um, 
They went and got tattoos. What? Yeah. This is the most... First of all, I've known you for three days. Why are we getting tattoos together? They do it every season. Like, that's so ridiculous. I don't think they did it the first season, though. I think they started it the second season. I've never been enough friends with anybody, ever, after three days and be like, yo, you know what we should do, man? Go get tatted up together. Mm. Yep. First of all, and it's a tattoo of the show. Right. That they could get kicked off of. <laughs> right. Yeah. What happens if you get your ass kicked out the next day because you fall? Um... Bad girl for life. Anyway, they uh, went and got tattoos. My girl Brandy was crying like a little bitch. I know. She was crying like she was reliving the rapes that her stepfather must have done to her. But you know, you know what made me mad? Was all that crying, then they flashed back to her and her makeup was back perfect again. Yeah, that was weird. I was like... Did they take a time out to yeah. redo her makeup? Like, she's not that special on the show to be redoing her makeup. And it was, she was crying before the needle hit her. Like, trembling. She was crying like little kids cry after they get a whooping. Like, that kind of cry. She couldn't even control her. She is the first stripper, though, not to have a tattoo. Yeah, I guess. Like, she said she had never had a tattoo before. That, that's kind of unbelievable. And the other chicks were so slutty, man. They was just finishing up tattoos. <laughs> but they was like, I already got the rest of the tattoo picked out. I just need the, the emblem right here in the middle of it. They was like, damn, y'all really came prepared to slut it up, man. Yeah, this one girl got a pink one. Yeah, like she, she planned it all. And the other girl kept talking. I didn't understand this part. Maybe I did. The girl that kept talking about she was Catholic and something like she not supposed to get tattoos and she was drunk and, and crying. Like, yeah. was she saying? What was she saying? Yeah, because she was mad because she was saying that she knew her mother was gonna get mad from her getting the tattoo. So when she was on the phone with her mom the next day, her mom said, well, "I didn't call you yesterday because I heard y'all was going to the tattoo shop." Oh. And then she was like, she's like, I don't approve of this. She said, but did you get a tattoo? And she didn't say anything. She was like, well, I guess that means, you know, you got one. Then that's when she was talking about cutting her off. And cutting off her credit card. Yeah. At the end of the phone call, she said, so this means I'm not going to get that puppy? Yeah. <laughs> And she, I don't know if she was serious or, like, that's some shit that maybe her mom had already hung up and they edited that in. But it was also funny, too, because she said that, and then she was like, I've never paid a bill in my life. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with your parents? And I keep noticing, none of them have talked about their dad yet. Well, I know somebody, and they're not going to ever hear this podcast, because right. I don't have them friends or anything. Right. Nobody, but her parents still take care of her. Right. And she is maybe 27. Pays the car, pays for her house. Does she work? No. Wow. What the hell does she do all day? Fuck if I know. Oh, man. Got, Maybe she needs to holler at the bad girl club, got, man. got mad at her parents once because they just showed up at her house and she had a boyfriend over. And she got mad at them for not calling first and not knocking. They own the shit. And that's what I said. Yeah. Okay. I was like, well, shit, they made the bill. They come over when they feel like it. I can't hang out with spoiled people, man. No. I, I get too upset. Yeah. And, and, and the me. first time you come to me with that kind of complaint, I'm just going to cut your ass out. So I can understand why that one girl was confused about what you mean you cutting me off. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a tragic thing to hear. But at the same time, like... You want to be a fucking bad girl? Yeah, that's not too bad. Your parents pay for your shit. But look at Lyric, though. I, did you watch the season with Lyric? I, I, some of it. I don't think I finished Lyric. She cussed her mom out because her mama wouldn't help her pay for some court bill she had. Yeah. <laughs> for stealing. Like I said, it's always the mama, ain't it? Is it just ironic that this whole show was brought to us by absentee fatherhood? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, none of these girls are ever like, so I call my dad. <laughs> Like, I don't even know what would happen if they said, like, the show might stop. They're like, oh, you got to go. You get get out. Well, if they call daddy, it would be some guy. Yeah. <laughs> if they say me. Yeah, and the, and the girls who got good daddies don't make the show. So I like when um, Brandy, when they were, when Kat was fighting uh, the Maroon 5 looking dude. Mm -hmm. um, I like when Brandy, who didn't have shit to do with shit, <laughs> just started breaking plates, man. She was just breaking shit. Telling everybody else to calm down. Yeah. I'm tired of this. <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she, the one girl that tried to be a peacemaker, Brandy just jumped on her like a spider on her back and grabbed her and rolled her on the ground and was like, no, let him fight. Let them fight. But now let me ask you, do you think they scared a cat because she's black? No. Or because she's thicker than them? Because she's thicker than them. Come on, dog. Cat is a whole lot of woman to handle. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean fat wise, I just mean she's too thick for the little She looks real to see that, don't you? Dog, I yes. would do a real blow. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. You, no. can, you can tell she used to dealing with some rough people, and she used to actually dealing with me. And I'm not trying to be not trying to yeah. be funny because she came at him like what? She is like I've never fought a woman in my life. I only fight men. And when she like rolled up on him, you could just see how it was about to go. Matter of fact, when they was at the club. And she saw that he was not gonna pay for them drinks. <laughs> she was, she was like, "You can't come out tell thirty-two motherfucking dollars like already <laughs> cursing out." And he was across the room. I said, "This is not gonna go the way that this dude thinks it's gonna go." And you know why she cussed him out? Cause she knew he was getting some pussy. Yep. And he knew it, so she was like, "Shit, the least this motherfucker could do is spend thirty dollars for some pussy." Yep. And the thing is, man, I'm with him all day because he was a hundred percent. Correct logically, a hundred percent correct. I'm not fucking all of y'all unless y'all all gonna give me some. I'm not paying for all y'all drinks. As a general rule, I would not pay for drinks anyway. <laughs> exactly. I just met you less than 24 hours ago. Buy your own drinks. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? So what then, you think this is a free ride. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and she got so hot, man, and I was like, yo, it's going down. She was staring at them from across the room. And I was like, yo, that dude has no idea he is not getting any tonight. <laughs> he was smart, he would have just took his ass home, man. And on the real, they he might not have had the money. Cause they picked some broke dudes, man. Dudes with money don't mess with them. Mm-hmm. Like when they go out, you never see a dude with money like, oh, all drinks on me, ladies. Like and even that's Cause a, they recognize she crazy. She is not about to fuck up what I got going on. That's that just made me realize something else. Oxygen doesn't pay for their drinks. No. Oh, they get a um, budget. That's crazy, yo. They, cause, no, yeah. they, they get a budget for the show. They have to pay for their own groceries. They what? Drink. Only time they get free drinks and stuff is like they got prearranged clubs they can go to. Right. And they have to schedule it in advance. That's crazy. How did you learn that? Um, Kendra, you know, she tell everything. Okay. Uh, from the last season. Yeah. She was on uh, Power Night 8 one day, so she told she all told that bitch. That's true. Yeah, that's, uh, that's crazy, though, because I was wondering. Used MTV and like yes. the real world. Because oh, with them, they cover everything. everything dog. They was buying drinks for motherfuckers that ain't even on the show. Yeah. People just going up and taking their drinks. Well, Kendra was like, they um, they not supposed to have their cell phones, mm. uh, MP3 players, anything. They was like, when they come there, they don't have anything. And well, you can like, tell. You can tell. They don't even give them, like, a TV. I watch. think she said they get, like, 200 or $300 a month. Wow. And that's for their groceries and... For them to be able to go out clubbing, like only time they get free food or drinks is when they prearrange it. Yeah, and I can tell they don't have a TV and shit because they just want them sitting around angry at each other, about to pop off. So, oh, all day. And um, then you mix that with liquor. You think it? You think though? Like it's a bunch of chicks that like to have sex. Yeah. You think it'd just be nothing but them fucking and see and it's too late. Around. It's too but many they seasons. They always want to argue. It's too many seasons. Everybody knows they bad girls now. You know what I'm saying? It's like, all you're doing is telling me what I suspect, which is that you might be crazy. And you confirm it when I see this camera. And it's like, <laughs> and dudes are different than chicks too, because it's like, if you show a camera to to a dude that's trying to bang something out on the low, that shit is like kryptonite. Like, oh no, I don't want to be on <laughs> national TV. Yeah. This is, you know, like the married dude that was like, uh, Leo was dating a married dude to some other cat. Yeah, and you can tell her to come home. Yeah, he was yeah. like, oh no, I ain't coming home. I'm fucking wrong with you. Yes. The bitch, I'm married. <laughs> My wife is here. Like, he was he was like, I'm not showing up. So it was funny too when he didn't come through. Um, and then she brought her other little dude through and he was like, I'm not really feeling this anything more than friendship. <laughs> like, she realized and, he didn't care. And why would she get mad at him? Like, First of all, you fucking a married man. Yeah. You're mad because he won't come. But then you got a secret boyfriend. Yeah. Who, and that, that just goes back to the whole, we talked about it a few podcasts ago. Women are sneakier than men. Yeah. Like, men Well, the were, thing is, she wasn't even being that sneaky about it. It's just more like, that's why I don't really believe in uh, when people just say open relationships is a solution to everything. It's like, look, good relationship is good relationship. Whether it's open, closed, Whatever mix, whatever the fuck, it's good if it's good. Don't just act like, oh no, nah, this will solve all your problems. There's a lot of fucked up people trying to compromise shit, and they really don't mean yeah. it. Cause she was on some like, it sounded more like the, the married dude wasn't gonna commit to her, so she went and got this little dude on the side on some like, well see, I can do it too. And then niggas like, you full of shit, I don't want to be with you either. <laughs> and she just sitting in the house mad as hell, like 
you gotta either grow some balls and tell dude what you really want, or you just gotta let it go. But you can't be sitting over here trying to front like, nah, I'm happy. This I like it. Like, like, really? You like when both motherfuckers won't come to the house for your ass? I, I don't think they know about each other though. Oh, uh, they do now. Well, now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that, and that's because she she didn't think that part all the way through. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think anybody's stupid enough to be like. Man, she used his real name. At least that white girl from Atlanta Housewives would just call him Big Papa. Dude, she was like, "Why won't Frederico come down?" I was like, "What? <laughs> Are you serious?" So right first now? of all, she's from Miami. So right. anybody named Frederico. <laughs> In Miami, is getting some woman. Around. Some woman knows exactly who that is now. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, no wonder he didn't come on the show. I guarantee you, he didn't know his voice was being recorded either. Yeah, y'all. Yes, I guarantee you, he did not know. I like Kristen's mom on that phone call when she goes, "You know, you're 24 years old and you act like an idiot." <laughs> <laughs> that should be the slogan for the show, man. Um, yeah. Also, man. The, I got some audio from the fight, man. I want to play. I want to play some of this audio. Hopefully, it's loud enough. Actually, I'm gonna skip through this to the actual fight part because they do a lot of talking, and uh, you can tell it's about to pop off. They're sitting up here in the car, in the limo coming back. And Cat was not having that shit about not paying for drinks. It's about to go down, bitches. You got to be me right now. With all these gorgeous bitches in this wild right here. You can't make $32? No. Guess what? Now, she assuming he wasn't going to tip because she's like, you can't pay $32? It's like, well, actually, bitch, it's 38. <laughs> <laughs> and she lied to them. She was like, it's a car full of gorgeous bitches. First of yeah. all, mm. what is your level? Yeah, <laughs> mm. I wouldn't just find none of y'all as gorgeous exactly. <laughs> so you know they're in the car and she's flipping the food and that was when I was like, "Yep, it's going down, it's going down." She put on her fight clothes too. She, yeah, she went in, changed it to the fight gear, and this is my favorite part of the whole conflict. This is where um, the Maroon Five dude tried to tell tell old girl like look it ain't even about to go down like that baby he's matching too by the way what are those hot pants and <laughs> a matching <laughs> red like he really is matching he went out of his way to match it up TV. yeah I'm so mad everything's alright everything's alright no everything is fine alright trust me I know everything's alright look at me look at me everything's alright he did the LL Cool J lips <laughs> like he licked his lips did the, everything's all right, and then tell the look at him. Everything's all right. He wants to be on TV, man. The one thing he didn't do was like caress her chin. Like that would have just talked. She didn't come close enough. But you can tell though what I'm saying, right? Yeah. He wants to be on. He is there for the camera. He could give a fuck which one of these bitches he's talking to. He's definitely doing a reunion show. Yeah, I hope so, man. So uh, that was when uh, shit started going down, of course, because it's always about to go down. Now, before Cat got out there, he was popping big shit. Which is also a mistake. Because when black women get angry, a lot of people don't know this, they get supersonic hearing. They can even hear anything above a thought. And, they can hear. And strong, too. Yeah, and they get super strong. But, you know, we all know that part. But the super hearing, <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. You think you're saying it below your breath? You're like, bitch, what you do? Huh? That's why black Nothing. women only beat their children in the house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time my mom was giving us a whooping, and she finished the whooping. And my brother, uh, she walked, she turned around to go back out the door. My brother turned around and flipped it off, and she heard the flip off. <laughs> How can you hear a gesture, man? <laughs> hey. Anyway. Why would I do that? What's wrong with her? I'll f buy a house, and I'll, I'll knock her house down. I'll knock her house down to the floor and put Baby, it stop. Uh, my house down. Stop. I'm sorry. I got to stay with my mind. And on top of that, the funny part about it, you told me you would pay for my drinks. Hey? How are you doing? And why would you see something like because that? Because she is a money hungry. Yeah, exactly. I mean, see, now the white girl knows the black woman got supersonic hair. She didn't finish her sentence. Yeah, she's like, she's a money hungry. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Never mind. And she told him, shush. She tried yeah. to. He was out there talking loud, man. I could just feel the ass would be coming, man. So soft ass dude in these tight pants. Man. And by the way, Cat wow. does look nice in them little shorts she got man, on. Man, Cat looks so good to me. <laughs> Every time. Man, if she could have got a hold of him, I think she'd have whooped his ass. I mean, like, she's the kind of chick that I think 
when I saw her, if I saw her out, I would be like, something wrong with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause she looking good. There ain't no man around her. She probably blanks. Like she, she just a little bit smaller than Serena Williams. Yeah. On her, on her thickness level. Oh man, she is bad, man. When she was on the treadmill in them tights, I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, I still remember no, last night. It's crazy. No. It's hell. <laughs> like you can date my friend. You can come around to hang out, but then when it's time to go, y'all both gotta leave. She Fuck definitely would never get my real name. Yeah. Oh man, I wouldn't even seriously. <laughs> Now see, he got a little hope right there Because she started a sentence off with I want to apologize She's not talking to him She's doing a pre-apology <laughs> For the ass whooping she's about to deliver to this motherfucker <laughs> Oh, she could have said I want in advance <laughs> Yeah, I want to apologize to you in advance See, they tried to trick you I know you heard the doorbell Yeah yeah. While she's in the middle of it, they they said, Dino, like, like, message. <laughs> <laughs> ass will be here. Did somebody order an ass will be a gram? <laughs> Real ass bitch, and I don't play no games with nobody. You can't spend $30, you can't. Hold on. See, a lot of people don't realize she's a real ass bitch. No and shoes on. She had to let him know. I'm a real ass bitch and I don't play no games with nobody. You can't spend thirty dollars. You can't f in this house. I'm no business to me. I'm with your friend. See, he tried to be logical, and that's where he fucked up right there. With the perfect move right there would be shut the fuck up. Just let the rage pass over you. Just look. She clearly told him if you can't spend thirty dollars. You can't fuck in this house. Yes. Like, he could have he could have hit her with I got y'all next time. Just never come back. Or raise your pimp hand. Did you not learn anything from a pimp named Slipback? <laughs> Look at this dude. He don't have no pimp. Hand. <laughs> this motherfucker is completely unprepared for this. <laughs> he, he doesn't even yeah, realize he, that he, he got is, him off guard. She yes. doesn't he does not realize he is forty five seconds away from a punch in the face. But he could try. Cause listen, I watched the Boondocks. A right. pimp named Slipback clearly he could have done it. Raise your pimp hand up and call her a bitch. Yeah, firmly. See, he yeah. wouldn't be able but, to do that. But you got to know that you can whoop her ass. If you don't know you can whoop her <laughs> ass, don't try no tricks yeah. like that. I'm if, sorry. Yeah. Just because there's a lot of listeners right now about to get their first ass whooping from a black woman. Oh, Karen put the disclaimer on yeah. the beginning yeah. of the show. Yeah. Okay. Man, you got to follow the advice. That's your ass. Because yeah. I'm clearly not doing that at home. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not trying to do it. Me, me either. And, I, and I've already told I don't advise you to do it either, Rob. Hell no. But no. I'm not doing it at home. No. Hell, for y'all and for his ass, that's what he should have did. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, one time me and Roger was joking about it. And I, and I love my husband very much. He has never abused me in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But I told him, I said, if you ever hit me, I said, you better just knock me out cold. I said, because if you don't and I have the energy or the ability or I can kind of sort of see you in my day's vision, I'm going to put some hands on you. Ain't no <laughs> fans or butts about it. Well, off is a joke. Play it off as a joke. Like, he should have just... <laughs> look, here's, a, here's a, what my options, I think, are. One, shut the fuck up and hope it pass over. That's right. That's what most men do. <laughs> most men are not going to try to argue with a crazy-ass woman. You can't win. Ever. There's you can't never win been, with a sensible woman. No. Has there ever been a time when you was arguing with a woman who was, like, out of her mind at the time? I don't argue. And you won the argument? No, I've never even seen it. I don't argue. I, I've never even heard of it. I've never seen... I've seen women argue before with each other, with others, with men. I've never seen a woman just be like, you know what? You're right. My bad. Mm-mm. Ever. I learned I was maybe 9, 10 years old. And I wanted to stay at home because I didn't want to go to some rock concert my mama was going to. Right. And I said, well, mom, why can't I just stay at home? Can I stay at my neighbor's house? Right. And she slapped me right then and there. <laughs> And said, you don't question me when I tell you something. You're going to do as I say. And that's the end of it. And I learned then not to be arguing with a woman. And she was right. She wasn't right because her argument was right. (laughs) Right. She was right because she was willing to go a lot further than your ass was. And that's exactly what's about to happen to this dude. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he just didn't grow up with black women. He didn't get that lesson. Yeah. Like, I learned that from my mama. I learned that one from my mama, too. It was like. I might feel right, and I might actually have logic and all kinds of things on my side. 
but she is willing to go a lot further with this than I am. I will just take the ass over now. And I know I wasn't disrespectful. Right. I ain't raised my voice. Right. Like, it wasn't it? other people around either. Like, it yeah. was. I, yeah, I've like been trying to show out another. You know, yeah. what's, what's funny, too, is that, uh, first of all, you're right. If there's other people around, the, the violence escalates by, like, times oh, 10. Oh, yeah, because you think you're trying to embarrass her. Oh, but yeah. um, the other thing that's funny is that I guarantee in his head, he had this whole little, like, conversation <laughs> planned out when, when he saw her walking up, like, yeah, all right, so I'm going to tell her, look, I can knock your house down, build a new house, that you rent my house, then when you get behind on the payments, kick you out of my house, because I got money, bitch. That's how it went in his head, but he didn't realize you're not going to have time to say any of that shit, bro. Mm. You know what it is, too? It's that whole, that whole white thing, like, I can say what I want. Then yeah. there's never any repercussion other than you just verbally saying something back to me. But like he's yeah. never dealt with a black woman like you said. Like and he go, say what you want. He's but. going by reality TV show rules that apply to every other show except the BGC yeah. on the Ox. <laughs> that shit don't go. You can beat somebody's ass and be in the house the next day. Yeah. yeah. This is not like the real world. Yeah, they have they have a sit down out there. Yeah, everyone, yeah, yeah. Cause everyone wants you back in that. They got they got the Jerry Springer security where they show up. <laughs> they show up after the ass whooping. Like, oh, is everybody okay? Yeah, and, and, and he's used to dealing with people where you have like a long soliloquy where everybody conversates. Yeah. No, she's like, and you said what? And yeah. that's the end of the conversation. Like you can talk to each other like yeah. pro wrestling. He's lucky the other girls didn't join in and help yeah. that. Dude, Brandy was down. She was rallying Funny. the troops oh. in the house. Brandy went back in the house and was on some like, let's go out there. We got to have her back. And people was like, but she's wrong. They're like, I don't matter. She live in a house. They was going to deliver the beating down to us too. All right, so let's resume to where this done motherfucker is trying to make a point. Yeah, when that um when that camera with the light hit the back of her pants, I don't think she had on any she underwear. Have on underwear. I don't, mm, mm. She can't fight for real. You don't need underwear to fight. See, he tried to get his line in. The line he had prepared. I don't know if you can hear it, but he was like, I will buy your house and knock it down. Like he but it don't matter when she is yelling at you and seconds away from punching you in your motherfucking face. None of these arguments make any sense to her. She's only hearing you not shutting the fuck up. She um follow Brandy's rule, you know, from the first episode when you prepare for a fight, you know, you gotta grease up so they can't She is greased up. I don't know if you know this, but um She's shiny. You could yeah, you she's way more shiny than she was at the club. That ain't sweat. Okay, she she done got greased up, dude. I, how did he not see the signs? <laughs> Like if I see a if I see a black woman walking towards me barefoot with Vaseline on her face, I'm it's over. I don't want to talk. No earrings, no makeup. One of us is going to, to the cops. He probably thought because it was cameramen around, he was like, "Oh, they'll help me. They'll yeah. save me." Mm-mm. He probably was talking shit with the cameraman, like, "You guys got my back, don't you?" Yeah. He was like, "Yes." Yeah, Security that. probably standing right there looking at his ass, like, "Look at this shit. He about to get his ass up." All right. That's, yeah, that's what you look broke. That's what you look broke. Oh. <laughs> face punch. And once, like, first of all, she's about to pop the fuck off. But once, um, once she hits you that first time, and no madness comes out of him, <laughs> like he didn't man up at all. He just took the punch, like, ouch. <laughs> like he went back to his childhood for a second. She was like, I'm gonna just keep punching this motherfucker. She is swinging on him, dude. Like he, like at least he didn't run. I give him credit for that. I wish yeah. I wish they had like some I don't know if they fought when the girls fight each other I wish like the cameraman or the security would throw like water balloons at them so it'd be like, <laughs> like, like, like a wet t-shirt contest at the same time well she went and got the water anyway she got enough water for everybody. Yes, yeah, but it's did. not. But it's it's it could be sexier. I guess that's what I'm saying. Just I, make it sexier for the guys that's watching the Oscars. You know what's, what's weird for me, man? And this and this is probably just and it's one of the reasons I'm sure that I'm happily married and um, I I don't like crazy women. I don't deal with a lot of drama. This is one of the biggest turnoffs in the world for me. Women that fight like <laughs> fucking fight fight. 
I don't like that shit. It, like, and it's nothing she can do. Like, as fine as she is, at this moment in time, I'm a hundred percent unattracted to her. Yo, yo, you can throw water, grease to put them in but jello. It's fun to watch. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I recognize I'm the one that's different. I'm not even saying this. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, like, this is specifically for me. Like I said, it might be one of the reasons. That I, you know, I don't want to, I never want to cheat. I'm not trying to holler at chicks. I really could give a fuck about other women. Because this is the kind of shit where I'm just like, really? This is what was inside you all this time? Yeah, and Roger, you know, as far as like fighting, fighting go, I don't fight. I like my face. I like my face not having no scars on it. I like all the hair upside my well, head. You, you say that now, but... I do. I really don't. But when I see fight. your tweets, but like, I could kill that bitch or... Why <laughs> <laughs> do you not tweet like that? Or it's about to go down. Like, <laughs> like really, y'all, it's in there somewhere. It's just here. It's, 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 it's suppressed. It hasn't had... That inner crazy had had a need to come out. Had had a reason to write. Yeah, it had no need to come out. I don't. I don't think that's true. I'm, I'm definitely deal. not. I'm definitely not pushing the limits. Look, I don't want to. I don't want to see don't, it. Don't let them fool you. You know it's there. Yeah, too. I believe. Yeah. It. Come on, come on, man. Anyway, uh, I can't remember if there's anything else worth playing on this. I let it play for a couple more seconds. I'm getting swung at. I don't care who said what to me. I would never attack anybody's guests in that way in my life ever. Please, 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 she calling him all type of bitches and punks. He's soft. He's soft, man. He like, was not prepared for any of this. I, and, and she called him a nut ass something. Like, that confused me. Like, yeah. I don't even know what that means, but I know it's bad. Like, I heard Beanie Siegel say it one time in that movie with him and Kevin Hart, but... Right. <laughs> uh, I think Paper Soldiers or something, but... So, speaking of nut ass bitches, uh, <laughs> the lady that called Dr. Laura, um, uh-huh. the, she got, you know, not called the N word, but the N word was used while she was on the phone. Uh huh. She's on TV now um, doing interviews with CNN. And I thought this was hilarious because, like, she's trying to have some balls and some respect in this interview. And I'm like, you called Dr. Laura. Only the worst scum of the earth <laughs> called Dr. Laura. Like, people that really are spotless. Well, I, I never read, too, what did she call Dr. Laura? What was her question in the very beginning for Dr. Laura to even want to use the N-word? Well, let's go ahead and do some, uh, we actually have, uh, you know, some articles about it, so let's start here. Dr. Laura quits radio to exercise her right to free speech. I swear, conservatives have free speech and freedom to religion confused. They have them backwards. <laughs> like, no, you can practice your religion anywhere as long as it ain't hurting nobody. You can't just fucking get paid to call people nigga and get me like, oh, what? What? The company didn't like that? It's free speech. I should keep getting money to say what the fuck I want. Unless, unless you run for president. Yeah, of course. Because then your pastor has to be careful in what he yeah. says. Free speech does not apply then. Yeah, it don't apply if your pastor is ridiculous. <laughs> um, Alright, so Dr. Laura Schlesinger was... Uh, on Larry King and explain why she was letting her radio contract lapse without renewal at the end of the year. So she can return to exercising her right to free speech as an American a citizen without fear of reprisal. Uh, according, keep in mind, every time I talk about this woman, she does have a sex tape from when she was younger <laughs> with a married man. Well, really? Because oh, I was going to say that yeah. was actually quite noble of her to say I no longer want a paycheck or a job yeah. so that I can say what I feel it like just, saying. It's just a coincidence <laughs> that my company no longer wants to pay me. Because <laughs> <laughs> she can't do that on her free time. She wants to have freedom of speech at work yeah. and so, on someone else's time. Like I'm trying to imagine what reality people live in where they're like, I could go to my job and just be like, nigga, 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 whatever the fuck. Uh, you know, like, Hey, fag, what's going on to my boss? And then be like, what? Why are you so sensitive? <laughs> Freedom of speech. Like, do you understand how work, uh, how it functions? No. Apparently, They're actually paying you not to do apparently, shit. Apparently, apparently, we have the wrong perception of what it's like to be in a professional environment. Apparently, dude. <laughs> like, you, like, they pay you at work not because of what you do. They actually pay you for to not do shit. 
Like, can you not be on the internet, not show up late, not act like a fool, not curse yeah. people out? Like, they're actually paying you to not do shit, not to do anything. That company that was going to fire that guy? Yeah. Um, I think you talked about, like, two podcasts ago where he was shot. Like, he went in there with the intent. Oh, yeah, yeah, the people. brother that shot at the, po- uh, the, the brew plant. Brewery. His supervisors had the wrong kind. Con- like, he was going in to work with the right mindset. Right. His supervisor had it wrong all along. Yeah, well, he was like, the supervisor was like, Dr. Lord. It's like, why can't we call you nigger at work? We do it in private. But like, he was, he just blanked. Yeah. Um, he handled it. And he was like, well, I also want to do company policy. I shoot shit at home. Yeah, like... Um, according to E.O. Online, um, <laughs> she told King, I want to be able to say what's on my mind and in my heart and what I think is helpful and useful without somebody getting angry. That's such bullshit. The entire thing about conservative radio is to make people angry. Mm-hmm. And even though she does relationships... She started in on her rant talking about Obama, talking about black people being sensitive since Obama became president and not being able to say whatever you want to racially. No, you know that that makes people mad and it, yeah, it might make some constituents of, or some listeners to your program feel comforted. It's going to make a lot of people mad too. So don't try to front with this like, I'm not here to make people mad. I'm so surprised. Uh, Alright, so... Uh, she's been under fire this week since speaking with a co- with a caller on her syndicated radio show about the seeming double standards that arise in conversations between white and black people. She even freely freely used the so called n word, so called it is the common <laughs> half a dozen times to make a point. Uh, her caller was it was more than half a dozen. Uh, her caller was not placated, and the next day, Dr. Laura was pilloried in the press for what seemed. Well, some deemed irresponsible behavior. She immediately apologized, but it doesn't seem to have helped. The interview with King may have been a way to explain why she decided to end her show when her contract expires. My contract is up for my radio show, and at the end of the year, I've decided to make the decision not to do the radio anymore. The reason is I want to regain my First Amendment rights. You never lost your rights. There's consequences with free speech. Especially at work. Yeah, like you just, there's, there's consequences in real life. If I walked into a, a fucking gay parade and was like, so I'm here to call everybody fags, freedom of speech, and then I got my ass whooped, guess the consequences of freedom of speech sometimes. Mm-hmm. I took a stand, apparently, or, or and got juggalos. my ass whooped. Yeah. <laughs> or juggalos. You could get juggalos. Yes. <laughs> or, you could take, or, maybe you, or maybe you decide that you're not paying for drinks. You're exercising your freedom of speech with your wallet. But you might take an ass whooping in about 45 minutes. You know what they didn't mention was that... um. She she also said her and her husband use the N word at home often. Well, she well what she tried to say. I mean, I heard the audio, and what she tried to say was like, well, if your husband, the black woman's husband, who's white, because uh, the black woman's married to a white dude, right? And she basically was like, look, when we're at home, he'll have his white friends over, and they'll make like racist jokes and racist comments, and they'll ask me a bunch of racially charged questions, and it makes me uncomfortable. What should I do? And instead of Dr. Laura, who normally is like, okay, you need to talk to him, you need to do this if it really affects you, she was also like, why don't you lighten up, bitch? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just the nigger word. Like, black comedians use nigger all the time. What's the big deal? And it was one of those, like, okay, you're making a personal, you have a personal platform you want to stand on. Because if she would have called up and said, hey, my husband calls me a dyke and a bitch and a hoe in front of his friends, she would have been like, yeah, you need to talk to him. That's not acceptable. But because it was nigger, it was like, hey, calm down. I'm not a nigger. Why What do you care? All right. He should leave the room every day saying bitches ain't shit. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh no, it's okay. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> lighten up. Yes, he beats you, but and, lighten up about and it. And the funniest part of the whole thing, she was like, "Don't NAACP me." I didn't know that was a verb. Yeah, it is now. Well, you know, Jesse kind of created that whole situation. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, she yeah, was saying, to stand for well, what, what she's but... saying when she says don't NAACP me, what she's talking about is uh, what happened to that lady who gave that talk, uh, gave that speech, and it got taken out of context. Yes, it did. Because she goes, don't take me out of context, don't NAACP me. So she's trying to say, don't take me out of context and try to say, I'm just calling you a nigger, because I'm not. I'm just saying nigger a lot. Anyway. Uh, so I went on my boy's website, the Insanity Report. Uh, it's my man Chris. He does a podcast called the Insanity Check. 
Uh, it's really, it's really funny. I love it. Uh, so he wrote an article called "The Five Stages of a Conservative Mea Culpa." Uh, last night on Larry King, Dr. Laura Schlesinger announced that she will be seeking, not seeking to renew a radio contract at the end of the year. Uh, she claims she wants to be able to regain her First Amendment rights to say whatever she wants. They say, insert dramatic eye roll. I think now is the perfect time to point out how this works. By this, I mean the way conservatives handle apologizing when they over with their over-the-top rants get them in trouble. I've broken it down to five stages. I'll use the incident with Dr. Laura as an example. Schlesinger. Black guys use it all the time. Turn on HBO. Listen to a black comic. All you hear is nigger, 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 nigger. Now, like Justin said earlier, if her point was really about equality, then wouldn't a better example, of course it don't exist, but wouldn't a better example been white guys use all the time on HBO, nigga, 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 and black people are cool with it? No, she couldn't find one. So that's <laughs> it so, so actually, your example is just more of a why black people can use it and not white people, but whatever. Yeah, you got a black man as president. And we have more complaining about racism than ever. I mean, I think it's I think that's hilarious. Word? Really? So that's how that's how plateau? That's as high yeah. as we can get? Yeah, well <laughs> once you get a black man, racism don't exist as once he's president. <laughs> It's just go back to slavery and still be like, oh, here you go complaining. <laughs> um, it's funny, too, because it's like there's never um, an acceptance on their part, like conservative radio, that maybe things are more racially charged on their side, too. It's only black people are going to be way more sensitive about Obama. There's never a, and some white people will be mad and they might call my radio station and they might listen to my show and they might buy my products. So I'm not going to call them out. You know what I'm saying? Like, why don't they ever acknowledge on their side that there could be the same type of backlash the opposite way? It's always niggas complaining. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can't have this argument. You know what? If you're all that hypersensitive about color and don't have a sense of humor, don't marry outside of your race. If you're going to marry out of your race, people are going to say, okay, what do blacks think? What do blacks think? What do whites think? What do Jews think? What do Catholics think? Of course, there isn't a one thing per se, but in general, there's think. Uh, and what I just heard from Jade is a lot of what I hear from black think. And it really is distressing and disturbing. And to put it in this, in context, she said the N-word, and I said on HBO, listening to black comics, you hear nigger, nigger, nigger. I don't call anybody a nigger. Nice try, Jade. Actually, suck try. So, um... She don't have... She has nobody black around her whatsoever. Yeah, and, and, and then Chris goes on to say, Dr. Laura started digging her hole by saying the N-word. She probably could have escaped with a rap on the knuckles, but... It, her, if you can't take jokes, don't marry outside of your race comment. Yeah. And thought process were really what got the ball rolling. It exposed her way of thinking as being that of a bigot, and it was clear that people were going to be offended. Yes. And I, I that, like, that's kind of where it went off yes. tracks to me. Is like, well, if you marry a white man, he gonna be racist. So I don't know what the big deal is. And, like, and that's not all. Is that really so. the reality? Does no, that mean too? Not. She's supposed to just accept. From now on, she get get a new slave name and yes. <laughs> like they, he gonna take her to the cotton fields every Saturday. So he said, stage, <laughs> stage two, stage two of the Mia Copa is claim you aren't saying or doing anything offensive and that you're being taken out of context by an overly sensitive person. Slash singer, don't take things out of concert. Don't the NAACP me. Uh, he says this, this happens. Stage two happens because the person committing the offense doesn't really know why they're being offensive or they pretend not to know. In this case, it really wasn't the N-word, but rather the thought process behind her whole rant. She basically takes a stand that she's not actually saying anything wrong, and that it's the, it is, in fact, the other person being too sensitive. And that's kind of, you know, the thing, it's kind of like, if you go, if you go to your wife and you're like, baby, you getting kind of fat, ha, ha, ha. Like, she ain't gonna laugh at that shit. There's nothing funny, like, you, you can't go, are you sensitive about your weight? No, dumbass. You're the one being insensitive. You have no idea what you're getting your ass into. Like, how did you expect her to take that? Well, how did that work for that teacher that was calling a student that, uh, like, a few years ago? Yeah, yeah. He was like, because the student says it all the time, I thought that was my way to relate to the student. Yeah. No, sure, your buddy. ass is unemployed now. <laughs> so, in stage two, she doubles down on her statement. She said, uh, she doubled down on her statement. Let's see. If you're hypersensitive about color and you don't have a sense of humor, don't marry outside of your race. Ah, hypersensitivity, okay, which is being bred by black activists. And that's the other thing, like, both sides do this. Like, when I hear conservative radio, I don't think all white people think like this. No. Because I, I know a bunch of cool-ass white people. I do, too. I just think it's a, a faction that of white culture, 
or especially money wise but you just gotta deal with it but as far as like the conservatives and the people in those small factions like black she's thinking them black panther motherfuckers that want to kill cracker babies represent all black people and shit like nasty, see nasty. the black activists are causing this like who, nobody listen to them motherfuckers no who's the last person you met that went to an NAACP meeting or a joined, the, joined the black yeah. Panthers or something alright I blame the juggalos yeah. Um, so no said, offense to any juggalos. It's not there. I really thought that once we had a black president, the attempt to demonize whites hating blacks would stop. But it seems to have grown, and I don't get it. And that was really, like, that's another thing that really is offensive because it's like... Yes, it is. What makes you think that having a black president means that people aren't going to say something is racist or not? Because it's like, if you're going to throw it out there when she's telling you my husband is being racist... And say, well, no, it's black activists invading your mind and demonizing white people. No, I'm telling you, he's calling me a nigga. This is not a, a, a concept I've come up with in my mind that's not happening. <laughs> I called you for advice, dumbass. Um, so, stage three, apologize to people offended, offended by what you claim wasn't offensive in stage two. So, and this is my, my favorite part. When she put out this apology... Um, and I'm not even going to read the apology, but... Well, I'll read it. But when she put out the apology, it was one of those like... So wait, if you were right, initially, you wouldn't have to apologize. Dude, no, that's one thing I can say about Rush Limbaugh. He don't apologize about a damn thing, and he hates everybody. But does he... <laughs> Does he use the N-word? I've never heard I don't think I've it. ever heard no, no, he don't use Because he's that. smart. He's smart. <laughs> yes, he can be, you can be even more racist not using the N-word. Yes, he's very... And I was going to say, like, he's high all the time and still got enough yes. sense. Yeah, even on the Icy the Cotton. Uh, which he bought from a black person for $22.30. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm just saying, dude. Like, that dude is obviously smarter about his racism because he's like, I know how to punch around the center. And soften them up to where it's like you're very irate, but there's nothing you can actually pin me on to sound racist. You could be like, but well, when you said this, that was racist. And he's like, no, because technically, if you look at it this way, what I said that time wasn't racist. And what you realize is I'm actually looking at a litany of offenses that are minor by themselves, but add up into this big conglomerate of racism. I, what she had was an ODB awards moment where he won his award. Yeah. For Wu Tang. <laughs> and, she, and she had one of those moments where you know what cause I'm cool with Jay-Z and the Columinati <laughs> we, we all down so, they taught me a few words and he, you know he he been telling me to go ahead and do what I feel like doing you know Ye did the meetings too Yeah. you know and Ye walked up on stage and took the mic so you know what I'm gonna say what I really feel like saying to this sometimes, sometimes I really feel like a lot of white people conservative white people feel like they let Obama be president. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, first of all, you voted against this motherfucker. You probably think he's Muslim and not from America. You hate everything he stands for. You always, you're obsessed as much about his race as the people that uh, voted for him strictly because of his race. So, like, aren't you kind of, you don't see how that's white privilege <laughs> to really relay this message to people like, we let you have a black president. Damn. <laughs> How much more do I gotta do? I can't, I can't say nigga no more. I thought we was at least gonna get the N word back and we could do this. Um, so her apology. I talk every day about doing the right thing, and yesterday I did the wrong thing. I didn't intend to hurt people, but I did, and that makes it wrong. Makes it the wrong thing to have done. I was attempting to make a philosophical point, and it and I articulated the N word all the way out more than one time, and that was wrong. I'll say it again. That was wrong. I ended up, I'm sure, with many of you losing the point that I was trying to make because you were shocked by the fact that I said the word. I myself realized that I had made a horrible mistake and was so upset I could not finish the show. I pulled myself off at the end of the hour. I had to finish the hour because 20 minutes of dead air doesn't work. I'm very sorry it won't happen again. She pulled herself off? Or yeah. Uh, the uh, producer said, yeah. um... Pretty sure the red light <laughs> came on like, uh, we need to see you in the back. Oh yeah, I've been fired before for many years. I know how it goes. <laughs> Not now, but right, right now. now. <laughs> yeah. So her apology isn't really that apology uh, mm -hmm. apologetic because for one, she's on, and I hate any apology that says I apologize if somebody was hurt. Like, oh wait, are you apologizing for somebody else's hurt feelings, or are you apologizing for your actions? You know. And she called you stupid. Yeah. In the apology. She said. 
end, you lost the point of her philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, I, I got the point. <laughs> like, I got the point. She, she called you stupid in her apology. You, you, you marry outside your race, you have to deal with the racism of your husband and his friends. I get the point. Like, she called you stupid. <laughs> like, how, so, how big is your ego that you're going to call me stupid? Yeah. And while apolo- so-called apologizing to me at the same time. Yeah, huh. I'm pretty sure. It's uh, the shit. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, at, no disrespect to you, though, Karen. Stay, <laughs> stage four, after people don't accept your bullshit apology, claim you are being unfairly persecuted. My contract is up for my radio show at the end of the year. I've made a decision not to do radio anymore. The reason I want, the reason is I want to regain my First Amendment rights. I want to be able to say what's on my mind and in my heart and what I think is helpful and useful without somebody getting angry. Some special interest group deciding this is the time to silence a voice of dissent and attack affiliates, attack sponsors. I'm sort of done with that. So now she's like, I'm the victim. I just called somebody nigger. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's a, or not called somebody nigger, but she was using it and she was basically telling you to accept it. So how long till you think she's on Fox? Um, I say January first. They probably can't yeah. wait to get her. What? The thing is, that's funny is she's supposed to be a relationship person. Expert. She's not a conservative talk show host of that ilk. You mm-hmm. know? She'll be on Fox soon. They'll they'll create some special relationship. Political yeah. segment. How politics can destroy a relationship. Alright, so I have a few more things I want to talk about. We're getting kind of long here, so I'm gonna, we're going to skip through. Uh, What's the other guy we don't want to uh, cut it? We don't want to have it too long. Cause, oh, um, counter clip, man. I'm sorry about this episode, man. It's just it's going on too long. I'm sorry, man. Um, tipping the barber. Tip your fucking barber, man. Alright? And now you don't tip your barber for him because we know they don't make below minimum wage. Tip your barber for you. When they see that long ass line and you wonder if you got skipped over by mistake, it's probably because you one of the motherfuckers that don't tip. Say that again. If I'm a barber and your broke ass coming there on some, I'm just paying eight dollars for the haircut or whatever the fuck a haircut costs now. I cut my own hair. But um, twelve, in there, yeah. Yeah, this shit probably like eighteen dollars now. Sixteen dollars. There you go, sixteen dollars. So here you go, you got a sixteen dollar haircut. If you can't break them off a couple dollars, a dollar after the haircut, then don't be mad when he skips over your ass. And you end up with the dude that cuts the fucked up edge ups that nobody <laughs> nobody ever seems to have a line for Herm or at the <laughs> fucked up haircut. Um, but yeah, dude, tip your barber. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Moss by Ground Zero. Uh, oh yeah, I made this joke on Twitter. If people are upset about having a Moss by Ground Zero, then can y'all also be upset about Catholic churches by little kids schools? <laughs> oh, 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 that's too far. Okay. Too soon, too soon. Yeah, that's too far. All right, but it's all Muslims attacked us on nine eleven, right? Uh, anyway, uh, Farb is back. Um, I don't care. If you ain't wrangling, you dangling. Uh, however, I will pick him up in my fantasy draft. I already I did, my brother. brother. I picked I him up late. Did. Uh, porn in the YMCA, man. What's going on with that? Man, listen, it's it's getting to the point now where I really don't even want to go to the gym, like. Every time you go to the locker room, it's motherfuckers walking around naked. Oh, the old like, white men. Like, they have their towels oh. on their shoulders. Yes. Like, what the fuck oh, is that? Oh, so they just open? It's like a Roman yeah. sauna. Yeah. I, yeah. Listen, bro, I'll tell you, I actually came out of the locker room practically in tears by what I saw. Yeah. <laughs> I was. I had to, listen, I had to go back and sit in the gym for another 20 minutes <laughs> just to get my head clear. Wow. Because I'm like, this motherfucker standing up naked at the doorway of the locker room. Oh. Yeah. And not just, like, well, first of all, everybody knows at any YMCA, it's a gay locker room yeah. for, the, for the old purpose. For the old man. And there's a family, family locker, locker room, room. Where there shouldn't be really any porn. There should be no yeah. nakedness going around. They That's got, normally for like the little kids with their parents. Kids, right. and they, yes, they yes. got sep- they got dressing rooms, everything. Yes, right. Privacy. Mm-hmm. This guy standing at the entrance way, naked. Yeah. So as I walk into the locker room, there's also a cop right there, and I'm like, Are you gonna do anything about this? He looks at the guy, looks at me, and walks out. <laughs> wow. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" The thing uh, that the dudes that trip me out uh, is there's two uh, two kinds of dudes. There's the one dude that weighs himself naked. <laughs> like, dude, the towel is adding maybe a pound. Why don't you just round off? Okay, round down one pound and just take that. Nah, this dude has to disrobe 
and walk around naked over to the weight weight thing. He eye raping me. I know you got yeah. ear raping, but he, he eye raping. He eye raping yes. me. Huh? And then the, the other I'm traumatized. No, the other cats I don't understand is like Justin was talking about the dudes that talk to each other naked. <laughs> Put some yeah. motherfucking clothes on, man. Yeah. Standing there naked. They go as far as leave the locker room section and go to the lobby of the yes. locker room. Where the TV is. Trying to open it? Yeah. And what, oh, there's no. never been a subject important enough in my life for me to have a conversation naked with another grown ass naked man. Yeah, and, and, and I guess because I'm on the woman's side, it's not that bad on the woman's side. The most you might get is breasts, but you know, their hips and stuff are only covered. Well, it's sexy for, for yeah. women to walk around like that, Karen. I don't know. I come on, Karen. No, come on. Stay with the program. <laughs> I mean, anyway. Not, <laughs> well, look, we're trying to talk about dick, and you keep bringing up titties. I'm sorry. Okay? That's all I know. <laughs> I don't have a penis. I'm sorry. So tell me more about the women walking around in the locker room. Anyway. So there's this dick in my face and I'm trying to talk about this dick and Karen just keeps trying to bring it back to titties. Nobody cares about titties. I just want to be able to sign some and that's it. Um, so anyway, man. Yeah, it's so gay in there, man. Those dudes, the dudes that talk to each other are the gayest, yo. I don't get those the, people. The thing is, and you can't leave your stuff in the car because when your right. car get broken too, you're going to be like, shit, I should have put my stuff in the locker. You can't bring your bag in the gym because they got a rule against that in certain wise. Yeah. And then, so you have to bring your bag, put it in the locker room. Yeah, even if you do bring it in the gym, it can get stolen. Yeah. I went in there once to just to change my shirt. I wasn't in there for more than a minute. It was like four dicks. Oh, just like, what are you doing? Why, why does anybody need to see that? What happened what, to modesty? And that's not the only type of porn going on at the wives here. First of all, there's, um... Child pornography porn. Oh man, going on at the YMCA. Yeah, we talked about this before. The, the little girls up there, like seriously, when this kid comes home with a be- baby in her belly, who's gonna be shocked? You know what I'm saying? Like these children are all like two years away from being on the bad girls. Because these are like 14, 15 year old girls. Yeah. Who have clearly puberty hit them a little early. And, and it, it, I wouldn't even say early. Like they are normal teenage girls, but. Their parents let them put on tight ass clothes and go to an unmonitored gym for three to four hours a, every day. A gym full of guys, like. Yeah, like I said, I, like I said, I don't have no kids, but like I said, it's gonna be us and we until you get to a certain age. Until, yeah. You have to be a cam- You know, your your children have to show you that they're responsible and put like this. If I know you cut a fool in me, what are you gonna do in public? I've never seen one of these girls exercise. No, because that's not what they come there for. I've never seen what exercise. What makes it sad is that they sit around the older boys and yeah. men yeah. in the in the gym. And it's like, dude, was you talking to her longer than two seconds? Yeah, like, seriously. Like, pass me the ball? Or, yeah. <laughs> like, you Sorry, actually had yeah. a conversation with her. Like, All right, man. So what yeah, about this? Uh, you end up in jail for. Then you didn't even talk about some chicks one time? Pouring at the wife. Oh, uh, oh, man. Dude. One time I was at the Y, man. This happened like a long time ago, maybe six, seven years ago. Um, I was playing ball and I was ready to leave. And it was this chick that looked like she was probably about 18, you know what I'm saying? Maybe 19. But she was hanging out with some chicks that looked like they was about 14. <laughs> I was like, no 18 year old hangs out with 14 year olds, right? Yeah. So she's talking, but she was talking to me like a regular adult would talk to you. Like she didn't have no childness in her approach to me. Cause normally, you know, a little girl come up to you, you like, mm, get your ass out of here. <laughs> like, she came on, she was like, hey, do you have a lighter? And I was like, no. She's like, well, what about, uh, do you have a car? Do you have a lighter in your car? And I was like, shit, oh yeah, I guess I do. I guess I do. She's like, well, can I use your lighter? And I was like, for what? She's like, I don't smoke a cigarette or something. Like, I don't have my lighter with me. Now, the whole time, I'm not really registering this conversation because, like, I'm still talking to, I think I was talking to Tony at the time. Like, I'm talking to somebody else. She's just an, an annoyance in my ear. <laughs> so I'm just like, look, when I get done talking, yes, you can use my life. She okay? raped you. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so I, I keep talking to Tony. We talk for, like, five, ten minutes. It's, you know, I forgot about this shit. I get my stuff. I'm walking out. I'm get when I start walking out the front door, she walks up behind me like, hey, I can still use your lighter, right? And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I open the door to get my, I don't smoke. I'm trying to get my lighter to work. I don't know how the shit works. Me either. So she just hops in the passenger seat. <laughs> no invite. No, I didn't say, oh, uh, cause just sit down here. She was like, hold on, I got it. This is how you do it. She's sitting in here and then that's right when it hit me cause I see her little friends. The 14 year olds are still 
over in the like waiting on her in the in the background. And they're like, girl, get out the car, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, this, this bitch is 14 too. I was like, yeah, you should probably go. She's like, I just need to like this. So I was like, yeah, hurry up. Uh, I'm gonna stand outside the car until you get ready. You know, you, so, you, you, dude, that shit was like a case hat that like I felt like no words for that. The only thing missing was the urine and a videotape. Like I was that close to being R. Kelly. That's a picture with your ID and Yeah, so seriously. And I, and like I had spoke to a cop on my way out. Like that's how how oblivious I was to what was going down. Like, I literally was like, hey, what's up, Officer Johnson? And just walked on right past him. So y'all hear that? Going at the YMCA is dangerous. Yeah, be don't, careful. Don't roll up there, man. Listen, be prepared when you go to the YMCA. Yeah, and what you, if people doing what they expect you to do but wanting a reward? What was up with Yeah, you? like it's... Like I, like I just like, You know every time You watch a divorce show Or something yeah. And the dude Always be like You know I take care Of my kids I, I pay my child support Like That's your child You know right. You yeah. supposed to yeah. Like yeah. Motherfucker You supposed to Drive the speed limit That's the law <laughs> that, That's yeah. what you Supposed to do <laughs> Like Yes you supposed To put your seatbelt on Like just, I'm tired of people Bragging about shit Doing shit they supposed to be doing. That's right. Like man, I got up and went to work today. All right, man. You Let's supposed see, you to. Want, you, want, you want a paycheck? Congratulations. <laughs> um. All right, man. Um. Couple articles. Naked fist fight shocks cafe patrons. Naked a woman strip. A woman stripped off naked in front of. Dozens of people to have breakfast at a popular Darwin restaurant yesterday. Witnesses said the woman took off all her clothes after she and another woman had a full-on fist fight over a man. <gasps> that was just a shocker. I think she was on the Bad Girl Club. She must have been. <laughs> that was just a shocker. Eyewitness Fernando Don- Dentes34 said people were trying to eat. Police. <laughs> he was with his Fernando. wife. He was with his wife. It's the same Fernando. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was that was uh he was with his wife right there. You could tell. Cause he was on some like uh that was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, so after I ordered thirds. I hated seeing that nipple. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so after we uh ate the third course of meals, I was like we should probably leave. Oh, and it was shaved too. <laughs> <laughs> Police said a thirty nine year old woman had to be picked up damn thirty nine, maybe nobody did want to see them titties. Uh, had to be picked up from a median strip of uh, Dick Ward and Drive. <laughs> <laughs> After she bared all in front of the Cool Spot Cafe. I wonder, did she research that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go to Dick Ward. What is this, the G Spot Cafe? Uh, the, patron, the patrons were reportedly unimpressed, so she must not look too good. Children were rushed inside the venue and police were called to escort the naked woman away. The woman was lying naked on the ground smoking a cigarette in full view of customers at, at the restaurant. Ah! Yeah, because that's the thing that's going to get your man back, right? <laughs> You're fighting over a man, right? This is how you convince him you were the one. Uh, you would never meet nobody else like me. Good. I'm glad, bitch. I know. Next time, make sure you wear your push-up bra. Three uniformed officers uh-huh. in a paddy wagon and a sedan arrived at the... They needed three cops. paddy wagon. Old school. <laughs> arrived at the scene before giving a woman an on-the-spot fine and taking her to her home in Malden. She didn't even get arrested. It's unclear whether she was drunk. Um, I'm going to say it's pretty clear. Mr. Dentez, who was the shift manager at the restaurant at the time, said that the staff had alerted police after customers complained about the strip tease. He said that he saw two women arguing near the cool spot entrance before one of them was pushed to the ground. The two ladies were arguing about the fellow they were with. It was pretty verbal. So she didn't get arrested? Nope. One had the other on the ground. She was pretty much defending herself, and then she was lifting up her shirt to show her breast. Tequila, tequila. <laughs> hey, that's my kind of fight at the, at the coffee shop. That's she, why I took three cars. Cause they were like, hey, naked bitches yeah. are fighting at the coffee Can shop. Can I have another uh, frappe? Get out here quick. Two. Dude, hot, the, police, the police was all had sirens on. It was like 12 police showed up. <laughs> Um, when that came across the intercom, yes they did. When they made that call, they're like, a uh, naked woman at the coffee shop. What she look like? Oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, she was pretty much defending herself. She took off her clothes and she walked through the median strip with the lit a cigarette and laid down. The customers weren't terribly impressed. They were more concerned for the kids. They rushed them inside. Uh, we got we get incidents occasionally, but not something like this. Well, of course not. Uh, then you have the best <laughs> attendance at a coffee shop okay, ever. Well, first of all, they said occasionally they have incidents like that. Like no, nothing like this. But they occasionally have incidents. Maybe not full nakedness, yeah. but maybe just some titties. Or yeah, you might just see a thong. A uh, 31-year-old uh-huh. Michael Lalana of L- Fullerton, California, was arrested Tuesday for releasing his seed into a female coworker's water bottle twice. Releasing his seed. <laughs> We got a semen bandit copycat. 
So she can swallow, but not with water. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> That's not to play I still, I still have to wonder, every time I hear these stories, <laughs> How did she know it was firm, man? <laughs> I, every time I hear these stories, <laughs> now it's water. Is is you, you probably got Is that I not mean, the lemony flavor? I'm sure. I'm sure he shook it up, but I'm saying she was drinking her water and was like, "Hmm, this tastes a little spermy." <laughs> Like, yeah, did she taste it again? Did she ever retaste it? You don't know that off of experience. Michael was a field director at Northwestern Mutual Investment Services. Uh, back in January 14, Michael did it for the first time. He took a water bottle and had his way with himself, <laughs> climaxed into the water bottle, then put it on the woman's desk. She didn't know what went down, so she drank from it and got sick. Oh, so she's one of them women. Hmm. I don't oh, swallow. Oh. I get sick. Three months later, Michael did it to the same woman again. She got sick again, <laughs> but this time she called the cops. That means she suspected it the first time. She's like, my stomach hurts. She you know what always makes my stomach hurt? <laughs> Semen. <laughs> Three months later, Michael did it the same way again. Right. Uh, the water was tested. The test turned up from some man seed, and the DNA from that, <laughs> the DNA from that seed was matched up uh, with Michael's. Who what wrote this, Mister Rogers? Nobody how, did he, how did he pick her out of all the women he works with? Like she must have been the finest. Like, well, had she done it before, he was like, hmm, she'll she'll appreciate this joke. You think that was a you think that was a battle where he was like like a long time ago? He told her like. One day you will swallow my sperm. She's like, get out of here, nigga. I would never suck your dick. He's like, actually, you will swallow it. Actually, he probably meant it in a more endearing way, like giving flowers or right. box of chocolate. He's giving you seeds. And <laughs> she took it the wrong way. Have some of me. The nerve of her. It's bitches. These ugly uh, bitches. Bitches ain't shit. Well, Mike, I am up in it in. Up Michael, up, up, up. Michael was arrested and has been charged with two counts of releasing an offensive material in a public place and two counts of assault. If he's convicted, he could get up to three years in prison and have to register as a sex offender. Michael is married and has a young daughter who both wife and daughter both enjoy sperm. According to the police, he he told them he did it because <laughs> say that, say that. <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I made breakfast. Ugh, Daddy, we don't want your breakfast. No. Uh, why not? It's sperm cakes. What, your mama like it? <laughs> <laughs> well, drink some water at least. You no, look hard. Yeah, no. All they kids. Oh, nothing you made. Daddy, this daughter no. just high dehydrated. Ew, Daddy, no. Michael is married and has a young daughter. According to police, he told him he did it because it was his weird sexual fetish. Why would he call it weird? Don't judge him. He didn't have any beef with the woman, but he did have plenty of milk. <laughs> uh, Roger Clemens got indicted for perjury. Did we not see this coming? Yeah, that's about time. <laughs> Everybody knew this nigga was lying. Um, but Barry Bonds hasn't been in court yet. Uh, is my husband gay? Should I even do this? This would take too long. Uh, well, if you have to ask. Right, yeah, if you have to ask, we'll do this on Sunday because that shit is fun. Um, and let's see, we had a couple short articles. Um. Uh, women, women's short shorts make multiple vehicle crash on I-5 worse. Ooh. Nice looking women in short shorts quick, quickly complicated an otherwise ordinary four car pile up this a- afternoon. Four car pile up? At the 4.15 p.m. four drivers crash into each other on the northbound I-5 41st Street in Everett. State troopers cleared the highway. The drivers and passengers were waiting by the side of the road, including several young women in summertime garb. Keith Leary from the state patrol said. More drivers crashed, apparently while checking out the women. Ah. Literally, Leary personally saw two more accidents happen within a minute involving distracted drivers. Speed also was a factor, he said. Only minor injuries were reported and no one was taken to the hospital. Traffic was back to normal within minutes. The police were waiting for a troll truck around 530. You mean to tell me y'all watching bitches' asses, that's why I'm stuck in traffic? Come on now. I just saw an Allstate commercial on um, making fun of people looking at women jogging. And crashing into a pole. Well, it ain't my fault, man. You seen these new shoes they got? They're supposed to be toning up your ass. That's their fault. Why are y'all doing this? Y'all safety hazards. I know. Go back to the old fashioned way of injections. And it also, isn't that giving the wrong message? Those shoes that like show the women's ass and like look how good your ass look. Like, so when they go to the gym and some dude is ogling them, are they supposed to, are they supposed to be like, well, this is what I wanted? Yep. <laughs> um, well, because uh, heels just aren't getting it anymore. No, not at the gym. Fantasy roleplay turns violent. A medieval reenactment turned from fantasy to a vicious brawl when a club member ripped clumps of her hair from a woman's head. Oh, uh, see, that's why I don't fight. 
a name I can't pronounce, 50 years old, a senior <laughs> member of the Red Raven Medieval Reenactment Club, 50 years old, really, admitted in the Palmerston North District Court yesterday that she attacked a woman who was taking photos of the club for a website on May 26. Screaming at the photographer, she punched a woman in the face, crushed her glasses, then wrestled her before grabbing hold of the tripod and camera. She dragged the, then dragged the woman towards the door of the club in the hall, yelling at her to leave. Damn. All for role playing. I thought it was sexual role play. It's fucking what's, Dungeons and Dragons. What's funny is nobody broke it up. Nobody pulled out their tasers. Mm-hmm. Nope. Like this. Maybe she took out her, her titties and showed everybody. Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, that's not sexy. Those titties. Right. Get two thumbs down. Yeah, six, five, police arrest ah. Paris, Paris booby trap gang. A gang. French police have arrested two teenage girls. They say stole hundreds of euros from unsuspecting cash machine customers after distracting them by flashing their breasts. <gasps> Maybe that's why she didn't really want a cigarette. It was trying to set me up. The 14-year-old girls were taken to Paris prosecutor's office for to face charges with a 12-year-old accomplice and placed in a home. The girl first struggled last week when they approached a man with drawing cash from an automated teller machine in the 6th district of Paris. One of the girls tried to distract him by sticking a newspaper under his nose. When that <laughs> failed, she, she, opened her shirt, she opened his shirt and grabbed his, her, grabbed his crotch. The other girl swiped 300 euros, $385. The girl struck again with the help of the 12-year-old a few days later using the same method to steal 500 euros from a woman. Well, I was gonna wow. say, like, how does sticking a newspaper under someone's nose distract them? Smell and, this print. And how did that not work? Like, how did that not work with the titty? Like, he didn't think something was up when he was like, they just tried to put newspaper under my nose. Get out of here, women. And Titties? Oh, wait a minute. From a 14 year old girl that looks like a boy. <laughs> that's very sexy. Yeah, I was not prepared for this. <laughs> All right, man. So, that's it for this episode of Black Guy Tips. Um,. Make sure you guys uh, follow us on Twitter. I'm at Rodimus Prime. I'm Say That Again, that S and D A T. J White for you too. Number four, you, and the number two. All right, so um, also go to the blog, theblackoutips.blogspot.com. Go to the Facebook page, Podomatic, iTunes, search for The Black Out Tips. Leave us a comment, you know, let us know that you appreciate this bullshit that we do. And, you know, I'm sorry that the episode was a day late, but we gave you a lot more podcasts than normal. So you're welcome. Enjoy your weekends, bitches. Yes. Peace. I love you. You too, baby. All right. Aww. Yo, Mac, I don't even understand how they didn't understand you and that Mary Joy. Yeah, I Keep know, Get that old man. robotic, futuristic George Jetson yeah, crazy well, Joy. Just like shooting a blab, robotic kick and slab. A flavor bit of batter till the chatter matter than the mad hat. I bet you buy shit, come my batter. I got the data to turn your body into animal And just like a piece of sizzling, you'll fit inside my stomach with the eggs and grits between. Take them down, Mac. The king is what I mean. I mean, my man get a up and put some change inside your hands. Now right. hold up, let's make this official. Make it Everybody, let's agree that MCs need a tissue. Wake them up. The folks, my only issue. I bet your mama miss you, and I bet the Mac take off like an MX miss. No more you whining on the charts climbing as I make the funk kick it out more harder than a nine. And if you didn't know who's rhyming, I guess I'm gonna say Craig Mac with perfect timing. You won't be around next year. My rap's too severe, kicking my flavor in your head. Here comes the brand new flavor in your head. Time for new flavor in your ear. I'm kicking new flavor in your ear. Back to brand new flavor in your ear. Craig Mac, 1000 degrees. You'll be on your knees and you'll be burning dragon fleas. Brother Freeze, man's disputed and deep rooted. Folks smoke and leaves your brains booted. This bad MC was stamina like Bruce Jenner. The winner of Taste of MCs for dinner. You're crazy like that glue. I think that you can outdo my one-two. That's sick like the flu. Shake them down, boy. I flip, boy.